last season when Delaware made its first ever trip to North Dakota State, it was a visit to forget. The Bison started fast and stampeded the Blue Hens out of Fargo in a dominating 38-10 victory. Now it's NDSU's turn to pay a visit to UD's home turf, looking for its 24th straight victory. It's the Herd and the Hens coming up next. Get your horns out! Let's get on with the show. Get your horns up. The green and gold are back in town. Get your horns up. Pumped up and ready to throw down. Toss that coin up in the air. Bring the boys up to the line. Hold your horns up high because it's rising time. Hello and welcome to Delaware Stadium in Newark, Delaware, as number one North Dakota State gets set to take on number 18 Delaware. Thanks so much for joining us all across the state of North Dakota and beyond. Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman with you in a road trip for North Dakota State. The furthest east they have been to play a game since 1932 when they took a train to play Army in George Washington. Yeah, the train was a necessity because airplane travel wasn't invented <laughs> at the scale it is now. But yeah, that is kind of the unique part of it in terms of the home and home uh, playing Delaware at the Fargo Dome last year and the return trip here. It's been real fun and people have been very inviting to us. Yeah, it certainly has been a great road trip here so far. And North Dakota State has lost exactly three road games since 2011. An amazing statistic considering how difficult it is to go on the road anywhere and win. The Bison have found the formula. The question is how? Uh, well, two really good things. <laughs> uh, one is talent. and The Bison have had a lot of that. We know that with all the national championships. And the other thing in terms of being consistent on the road especially, defense. Defense, as the coaches will say, always travels. And so when you have a talented defense, you always have a chance. And the Bison have had more than a chance. They've won all but three. North Dakota State jumped all over Delaware last year at the Fargo Dome. It was 28-0 after the first quarter, 35-0 at the half. It'll be curious to see how North Dakota State comes out and attacks the Blue Hens defense this time around. Well, right before we uh, came out here, we ran into Randy Hedberg, the quarterback's coach from NDSU. We said, Randy, what should we tell everybody? He said, hey, on first downs, expect us to throw. We need to be efficient on first down. So that will be a little bit different because everybody thinks that of NDSU as being that run first team. Obviously, the Bison will want to establish the run today. but try and see if there's a few extra throws early on. And quarterback Trey Lance coming off two fantastic performances as the starter of the redshirt freshman out of Marshall. Six touchdown passes, five incompletions in his first two games. How does he build on that here in his first road start? Well, the continue to do what you're doing, make good decisions. That's the one thing Coach Hedberg also said in conversations we had with him, that he feels that he is prepared. When he means prepared, he means mentally. And with a redshirt freshman, you would think you would see more mistakes out of Trey Lance. He really hasn't done that. The really last week, the only mistakes he maybe made was in the run game. He pulled it a couple of times when he shouldn't have, but that's just being a freshman. Both teams out for the coin toss on an overcast and really pleasant afternoon here in Delaware. As we mentioned in the pregame show, LT, there is a couple of injuries on both sides that could play a factor today and, and how each side of the ball performs for each group. Well, certainly whenever James Hendricks isn't out there, you are not as good of a defense as you are uh, with him. There's no question about that. But for Delaware, it's two really key players. I know uh, Ryan talked a, bit, a little bit about it, and ironically, I think they both wear number 33. Uh, Lee and uh, and then uh, Buchanan, their top rusher and their top tackler will not be in this particular game today. So we could see more Javar Garrett today, who is a redshirt freshman that transferred back from the University of Virginia. He was actually considered one of Virginia's best recruits in that signing class. May see him, may be some other guys. Sal Morrow, a guy that is kind of a hybrid defensive end slash linebacker. They call him the cat position in this defense. We'll see how much he gets on the field today as well. Both of these teams, I think, Brian, are, are on a little bit of a similar path in that they both graduated a number of players both coaching staffs love the talent that they have, but the talent in many respects is young. Coach Rocco, this is in his third season, so a lot of these redshirt freshmen and sophomores that you're going to see play today, 
those are the building blocks that he thinks may, uh, next year and then even the year beyond are going to be one of the top teams in the CAA. And North Dakota State did travel some extra bodies this week, mainly for special teams, right, LT? There's uh, issues uh, with some injuries, and, and there's some freshmen yep. that we have not seen on the field that we made today. Uh, Luke Wirtz traveled, number 47. Julian Wadarsik, number 20. He, we, he probably was going to be here anyway. But guys, you might not have known. DJ Stewart, uh, Terrell Hall, 29. Number 10, Dom Jones. Those are kids that you may see specifically because of some of those injuries and the opportunity to help the Bison play on special teams. Ryan Cole will do the kickoff honors. We actually ran into his parents last night. <laughs> they are actually the aunt and uncle to Adam Keller, yeah, the former kicker in North Dakota State. We had a good conversation with them as we are underway, and this one booted out of the back of the end zone, and North Dakota State will start at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State's offensive unit, sponsored by Shields. Trey Lance, Marshall, Minnesota. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Zach Kubis, Dickinson, North Dakota. Carson Shooting, Rawl, North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Cordell Volson, Belfour, North Dakota. Ben Ellison, Holly, Minnesota. Garrett Malstrom, Vergas, Minnesota. Cy Brooks, Fargo, North Dakota. Christian Watson, Tampa, Florida. Phoenix Sproles, New Hope, Minnesota. North Dakota State coming out three wide in the boundary here to start the football game. Lance dropping it off, and that is Adam Cofield tackled immediately on the play after no game. And that is Justice Henley, the sophomore safety coming up to make the stop. There's a look at Trey Lance off to a tremendous start. Ten total touchdowns. Brought to you as sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef farmers and ranchers. Yeah, his decision-making passing-wise has been really solid this year. I don't know that he's really put the ball into too many positions where the defense could take it away through the first two games. And off up the middle, Cofield again as the pile pushes forward to the 29-yard line before he is stacked up. We'll bring up third and six. But just to emphasize how big a tackle that was on Henley, one of the starting defenses uh, players we're going to see, uh, sponsored by Shields, the, the Bison already behind the sticks. Uh, Noah Plack, I know the Bison coaches really like that redshirt freshman at safety. Dom Cavato, also a guy back in the lineup. He left school after only four games last season to be with his mother who had cancer, came back in the fall, and now he's in the starting lineup. First big test on third down. And somebody moved, it looked like, on the end there for North Dakota State. I think it was Offense, Cordell Volson. Number 67, five yards, third down. So now third and six turns into third and 11. Your call sheet has a lot more plays on it for third and six than it does third and double digits. Lance will operate out of the shotgun. Christian Watson on the bottom of your screen. Jimmy Kapuris in the slot. Lance is going to air it out. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Going downfield. Is it in bounds? Nope. It is not. Incomplete. Looking for Josh Babich, his big six-foot-six tight end. On the coverage was Kendrick Whitehead, a sophomore out of Middleton, Delaware, and it's a three and out for North Dakota State. Well, there's no question what the hands were going to do here on third and long. They were coming. Drew Nichols, one of the linebackers, multiple players all came. That left meant that there was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, but uh, they really loaded up uh, in that A-gap spot where Jensen was located, so they came after him. Garrett Wegner back for his first punt of the day, averaging 42, and it's blocked out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Well, there's the fast start that the Blue Hens wanted. A special teams play is going to put the first po uh, points on the board. Initially, I wasn't sure if that ball had stayed in the end zone, if it had been able to have been fall on for a touchdown. That would have been very close. I know this point. But Poindexter, number two, I think, was the one that had the opportunity to maybe jump on it. Luke Frederick, the backup tight end, was the one that got it.
And a special teams miscue here for North Dakota State will give Delaware the football and a two-point lead. But in a way, the Bison maybe caught a break in the fact that it was two points instead of six. Yeah. I mean, make no mistake, uh, Coach Rocco and Nodak Insurance Company replay. Keep an eye on the football here after it's blocked. The block comes, and you see number 80 get a pawn at the number two. That's Poindexter, I believe. And he's staying away from it. And maybe it did hit maybe on the out-of-bounds line. line. Yeah. So Wegner will boot this one away now on the free kick to Delaware. And the Blue Hens had it fumbled out of bounds. On the return by the return man, Jordan Townsend, freshman wide receiver out of Farrell, Pennsylvania. So all things considered, not too bad a field position for North Dakota State after what happened. Yeah, you generally assume you're going to catch this and run it 15, 20 yards, so back on the 25 instead of around midfield. Blue Hens come out with two wide receivers and Kehoe, Pat Kehoe, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Inside handoff, and Michael Tutsi right there in the backfield. And no gain on that play for Andre Robinson. Interesting story how he ended up back at Delaware. Started his career at Penn State, but he was playing by behind a guy by the name of Saquon Barkley, <laughs> LT. That was pretty good. Yeah, so that's the reason he doesn't play at Penn State, but then he returns back here. And he talked in the press conference this week just about how much he loves the fact his mom can come and watch him play. And he feels there seems to be more at peace with himself than he was when he was at Penn State. Kehoe to throw, pressure coming. Kehoe able to escape, might just run with it. Dawson Weber will force him out of bounds after a gain of five to the 30. That'll bring up third and five. There is a look at Kehoe. His statistics, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef farmers and ranchers. Numbers not bad, but he did have the three interceptions in the first half last week against Rhode Island. Hens were down 13 to nothing before rallying back in triple overtime to win 44-36. The key matchup is to see if Bryce DeMalley, the tight end, can get open. Michael Tutsi did a great job on him last play. Kiho now maybe making a check at the line here. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Pre-snap read is this too high. Kiho has time in the pocket. High across the middle, it's intercepted. And that is Michael Tutsi who has his third pick in the last two games. The Bison goal defensively was to give Kehoe a number of post-snap reads. And the Bison pre-snap. This is on the back side of it. You'll take a look at Kehoe, your Nodak Insurance Company replay. The pass flies high, Tutsi gets it, but Tutsi rotated the single high safety. And so Weber played down on the three receiver side. You rotate to a single high, so you gave the quarterback a different look, and he threw right into it. Well done. Good disguise. Fifth career interception for Michael Tutsi, the sophomore out of Indianapolis. Design run here for Trey Lance, trying to pick his way, and then he is turned back by Drew Nichols after a gain of one. Nichols, a guy that runs the show out there for Delaware. Just a sophomore. Coaches really love him. And so far, so good here for this Delaware defense. The Bison, think on the ground. If you if you just remember some of the plays last week against UND that were successful, C-gap, D-gap things, that's where the Bison coming into this game think they can get yards on the ground. Ty Brooks in motion. He gets the give. Cofield lays the block. Ty Brooks! Off to the races, down to the 10 and the five yard line. Explosive play for North Dakota State. That's what we're talking about. This is an outside, so they're showing quarterback power, disguising that with the pull, and then Cofield with a really nice block, another good block downfield. I think that was Phoenix Sproles that helped that guy get inside the, the five yard line, right at the five. So the first big play for the Bison on the ground. Kendrick Whitehead making the stop for Delaware. First and goal, North Dakota State. This time it's Kobe Johnson inside the five, down to the one-yard line. And Johnson 
His workload has continued to increase here every week. A very talented true freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. In fact, Randy Hedberg told me he thought that Johnson would have a much bigger role this week in the run game. We see him out there again. Johnson powering his way into the end zone. Touchdown. First career score for the young man out of Georgia who's really made an impression here early in the season. Real nice line surge when the Bison got it the last two plays, both of them that hand off to Johnson. This time on the right side of that offensive line. Here we are. Look at that push. That's where it's coming from. Really smashing down on a hard slant. North Dakota State again so showing some funny stuff on the extra point. Now getting into a traditional formation. Designed for the rest of the Valley Conference to look at. <laughs> so here comes Griffin Crosa who's doing a nice job here filling in for the injured Jake Reinholtz. North Dakota State responds after the early miscue on special teams and goes down the field after the Michael Tutsi interception. Kobe Johnson has his first touchdown. It's 7-2. Bison lead it on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Let's take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap after the Tutsi interception. Four plays, 35 yards in just a minute, 36. 29 of those yards on the Ty Brooks run to get to the five yard line. I love the misdirection on that Ty Brooks run though too because one of the guards pulled into an A-gap power. Time for another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planting season with Peterson Farm Seed. And this return by Townsend up to the 29 yard line. A couple of bodies flying in there where Darsik always seems to be around the football. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Logan North McCormick, Dakota. Kimberly, Wisconsin. Cole Karch, Germantown, Wisconsin. Jack Darnell, Champlin, Minnesota. Derek Tuska, Warner, South Dakota. Aaron Mercado, Oakland, California. Jackson Hanke, Park River, North Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Michael Tutsi, Indianapolis, Indiana. Dawson Weber, Sacramento, California. Josh Hayes, Lakeland, Florida. And Derek Tuska flying in, working around his man, and taking down Kehoe for a loss of eight yards back to the 22. <laughs> Great swim move on the inside there for the senior out of Warner, South Dakota. Those starting lineups brought to you by Shields. Beautiful speed rush off the edge. He just beats his guys. He got there so fast, the running back couldn't even cross the face of the quarterback to get the tackle. Tuska, expect him on third and short today to play some linebacker. That will be a new twist and a new wrinkle that the Bison think they'll throw at the hands today. 17 and a half career sacks now for Derek Tuska. Second and long. Oh, boy, the Bison getting in the backfield again. Swarmed under. All sorts of Bison defenders in the backfield. Spencer Wagey got in there, Cole Karch. Nolan Henderson playing quarterback. He has played the first two games. It's not a big deal that he comes in. He's one of the uh, all-time best runners, if you will, uh, in the Delaware high school history. But he did not have an, a chance because Wagey playing looked like three technique inside, using some speed to try to take care of the things. Now the Bison showing another different look with just three down linemen because it is third and a monster. Keo back again, flushed, dumping it off and getting it off to his running back, Andre Robinson. He is well short of the first down to the 25 before he is swarmed under by Tutsi and Karch. Boy, I tell you, it's going to be a beautiful day for number 91 if uh, Delaware keeps playing one-on-one -on, -one on the edge because on a three-man rush, it was Tuska once again from the right side just blowing through there all by himself. So pressure on the quarterback with five guys trying to block three. Good sign for NDSU. First down defense has been tremendous from both teams to start this thing. Nick Pritchard on for his first punt of the day. Nice high hanging putt. And fielded about the 22 yard line. And there is a lane to the outside and room to run for Trevor Height. The junior out of Pepin, Wisconsin, getting more reps, and he's got good field position for the Bison near midfield. We step aside. North Dakota State with the football. 7.54 to go in the first quarter. 7-2, NDSU on the A Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard.
North Dakota State first and 10 from its own 46-yard line. I formation for the Bison. Leading by five. First quarter from Newark, Delaware. Play action for Lance. Swings it up. Boy, wide open receivers. Phoenix Sproles. He's got a first down inside Delaware territory to about the 37-yard line and a gain of 16. Oh, did Sproles sell the fly pattern on that? <laughs> Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. That's where Phoenix Sproles is getting so good, Brian, as they load up the boundary once again, but his pass routes have been tremendous this year. Both corners playing off here of the two NDSU receivers. Ty Brooks tiptoeing his way through a hole before he is turned back. Whitehead get in on another attack, and Noah Platt coming down from his safety spot as well. Boy, a big redshirt freshman. NDSU coaches had a lot of good things to say about. Both safeties love on the either team, really. All the safeties love to come down and help in the rush, but that makes you a little susceptible to play action pass. Now with a look at Javar Garrett, the young man we told you about, was a redshirt freshman that went to Virginia, redshirted last year, and is going to get extended reps without Johnny Buchanan, the leading tackler for Delaware out of the lineup. Lance is going to keep it again. Try to use his athleticism. Bounce into the outside and getting the corner is forced out of bounds by Justice Henley. Close to a first down. Two yards short to the 29. I go, I take the trying out of that statement. He used his athleticism because he was, uh, there was no blockers on that side. He pulled it out. There was just blue jerseys in front of him. He not, had a nice little jab step and a move to the outside. He beat the corner, or he beat the linebacker. That was Garrett once again, who he took care of. As we take a look at Justice Henley. It's shaken up a little bit. He was the guy that forced Lance out of the pocket uh, to the sideline here. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Almost picking up the first, about two yards short. So third down and two for North Dakota State. Bison pulling a lot of guards, showing misdirection. Trying to run it up in there hard was Cofield, and he's going to be very close. I think he's about a yard short. And you'd have to think North Dakota State will leave the offense on the field. This is really not in the range of the freshman kicker, Krosa, in terms of where the coaching staff is comfortable with him kicking a field goal. Not only is it in the range, but it's into the wind as well. Well, now they are bringing Krosa out. Or is it Wegner? Well, Wegner's got the leg. No. No, oh, it is going to be Krosa that's going to attempt. I'm a little surprised by this. Well, Matt Ends thinking he wouldn't go this far. And also, don't be shocked if this thing is a fake either. Would be a 46-yard attempt for Krosa, the true freshman out of Powell, Ohio. It's down. It is going to be booted up. Does it have enough leg? It's close. It hit the upright and bounced through. <laughs> I think we found his distance today. Hit the crossbar for Griffin Krosa. He is fired up. Good from 41, and he just had enough on it to get it through. <laughs> Nodak Insurance Company replay. This is going to be the old doink and over. 46-yard <laughs> attempt for Griffin Krosa. And North Dakota State leads it by the final, uh, by the score of 10 to 2 as we step aside. 5.45 to go in the first quarter. Five plays, 26 yards. Griffin Krosa, career-high 46-yard field goal attempt. And he just had enough leg to bounce it through the crossbar. And he is now two for two in his young career. Garrett Wegner getting set to kick away. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Bobbles down to about the nine-yard line. And Townsend has a lane. And now he's down to the sideline. Wegner giving chase. And finally forcing him out of bounds inside the 35. Down to the 33-yard line. So Delaware gets primo field position on a nice return, just like the Bison did on the punt return on that last uh, short scoring drive. Let's now pause for a quick message from Tobolt Seed. Tobolt Seed, family owned and operated for over 90 years. How do you stay in business that long? Hard work and integrity. Tobolt Seed offers Thunder Seed and List soybeans, Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, Liberty Link GT27 soybeans, and Thunder Seed corn. Delaware trying to swing back the momentum here. 
Inside give to Robinson. Boy, North Dakota State's defensive linemen are getting into the backfield. Matt Beagler that time got the penetration from his defensive tackle position. Well, where did he go? Across the face of the center. That one of the things we talked about in the pregame show against Farinella. They he struggles against stunts and twists, and you, you just take those two defensive tackles, X them through those two uh, the, through the spot right across the face of the center, and that's where the pressure came from. Beagler eating up that last play, which is. Obviously something that should look familiar because the Bison run that Delta formation too. North Dakota State confused a bit defensively, so a timeout called there by Matt Entz trying to get the troops organized. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC equal housing lender. For Delaware, what do you try to get done? So you take a look at the offensive unit for the Blue Hens, sponsored by Shields. We talked about Kehoe, Robinson getting more reps at running back with the Jean Lee injured. Damali's a guy that had two touchdown receptions in the second half. He's their best receiver. Yeah, last, tight end. last week in a win at Rhode Island. And also Owen Tyler, the fullback, is also a pass receiving threat. He also caught a touchdown in a two point conversion. They don't see Damali in there, so they don't throw a lot out of this formation, but they did. Dropped off to Robinson, he keeps his feet. Bang out of bounds by Weber. Two yards short of a first down. Let's go to Ryan Geller on the sidelines. Hey guys, it's the first International Bank and Trust sideline report. And I had a chance to talk to Griffin Crosa just before the game, and I asked him, how far are you comfortable today? And guys, you won't believe this. He told me, I'm comfortable from 47 yards. <laughs> he hit a 46 yarders guy, and he might have, might have got it from 47. Back up to you. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. A big kick there for Crosa. Henderson, the backup quarterback, in here to take this snap on third and short. He's a great runner. And they run the option, swinging it outside. Bison had it played really well, coming up with Tutsi, and I think he's going to be a yard short of a first down in decision time here for Danny Rocco. Uh, Henderson was an option quarterback in high school. He won three straight championships. He's from Smyrna, Delaware, not far from here. And his family has had season tickets to the Blue Hens for years. So he's a guy that wanted to play here. Now Keyhole back in on fourth and one. The offense on the field. Boy, three backs in the eye. Robinson trying to run it up in there and right to the first down marker. And it's going to be close. I think he's got enough, but it will depend on the spot. Triple stack off the left side. First down. And it is a first down for Robinson. For Robinson, more of a power back. Even though he slimmed down about 15 pounds this past summer, so he was he was a lot heavier when he was at Penn State. Doesn't quite have the moves that Lee does, but of course they they meaning Delaware, they do not have number 33 today. You'll see a lot of different formations. No real big tendencies from this Delaware offense. So Kehoe operating out of the shotgun in first down, and they give it to Robinson, sidestepping around a couple of times, trying to find an opening, but Jabril Cox there to close things down for no gain. Again, really good pressure off the defensive line. I saw number 99 get in there, Spencer Wagey. He didn't make the tackle, but he certainly made Robinson shift, move, and try to spin his way back to the Bison defensive line has been really solid so far today. He go back to pass, dropping it off Robinson in the flat. And he is forced out of bounds by Josh Hayes after a gain of about five. Let's take a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. And a fair amount of Bison fans have made the trek out east. Many of them alumni that are from this area. There was 18 different states represented in the tailgate lot today for North Dakota State. I ran into a former Bismarck High football player, graduated in 2011 in our hotel, lives in Chesapeake, Virginia, about a four-hour drive up. So send us your Homer watch party picks. We'll show them in the fourth quarter if we get them. Josh Hayes runs onto the field here on the last second, third down and about six. Fire pits, motions, timeout. and I think we got another timeout as there was some confusion on the North Dakota State sideline. Second Once again, Hayes came Dakota running State. on pretty late. 30 second timeout. And two timeouts burned here in the first quarter. Well, I think the Bison had nickel called 
and Bridges was going to the nickel position and Hayes was not in there to play his normal spot uh, from his corner position. So Marquise Bridges in this particular instance was the nickel player, but the Bison were short one cornerback. This is a big play, I feel like, LT for both teams. Delaware able to get back some momentum on the long kickoff return there by Townsend. And we'll try to take advantage of the field position here. And the Bison have only allowed two touchdowns all year long. And the Delaware offense has just 14 total yards so far here in the football game. Empty backfield here. Five receivers in the formation. Kehoe dropping it off, and it's batted away. Nice job by Jackson Hankey. Blanketing the intended target there, Gene Coleman, who motioned out of the backfield into the slot. Well, that's a beautiful play for NDSU because Hankey's not known for that. He is a, a run stopper. I mean, he's not the fastest guy in the world. He'll be the first one to tell you. But if you put yourself in the proper position and make the proper technique, see how Hankey reaches across with that right hand, uh, hand as it comes right at you? He played it perfectly. So you don't have to be fast, I guess, if you are in the right spot. Hankey, well done. Jake Roth will attempt a 36-yard field goal. And that one is bang through. Jake Roth, the senior out of Reading, Pennsylvania. Knocks it through and gets Delaware back within five with 2.17 to go here in the opening quarter. You know, we, I don't know if we've heard Coach Entz use it yet, but let's just hark it back to Coach Kleiman. What did Coach Kleiman always say? Field goals will not beat you. So that Delaware could not take advantage in terms of getting into the end zone after that long kick return. And the one thing that Delaware certainly wants to establish is the running game. So far, just it's negative five yards. And we've seen both the defensive tackles and the defensive ends get penetration into the backfield several times here so far. Which is really nice to see out of those defensive tackles. Because when that's not the position where you normally expect to see the Bison be able to penetrate, but they're taking advantage of those guards in the center. The Bobcat scoring recap. Eight plays and moving the ball just 14 yards and 318. And again, set up by the long return by Townsend to about the 30 yard line. And Jake Roth able to connect from 36 yards. And Coe will take care of the kickoff duties once again here today. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Ty Brooks will let this one sail out of the back of the end zone, and any issue will start at its own 25 yard line. It's a few drives in now. I think at this stage of the game, it's going to be a little interesting to see what what Coach Roll and the offensive staff have observed and and how they want to try and attack. Um, so far, not much run in the middle. There's been a little bit of quarterback run. The big sweep was open. Bison still feel they can get things through the passing. Corners are playing really soft here. Lance to Mathis, who had to go down to one knee to make the reception. Up to the 29-yard line, gain of four, and Mathis had the big 41-yard catch on the opening drive last week against North Dakota that got the Bison rolling. It's the second time that the Bison went downfield last week in the long bomb, but that particular play is going to be open all day because right now the corners, Hill, uh, I don't know if Henley came back out there. Yes, he is back out there, but they, they meaning the corners, are playing soft. Still a good eight, seven, eight yards off the ball. Fake this time, and run inside the boundary for Lance. Blue Hens trying to close quickly, but Lance lowering the shoulder and getting a first down before he is dragged down on the play by Anthony Toro, another redshirt freshman linebacker. Yeah, Tanner Bolson last year was just gold out of his center position to snap the ball and then pull. We saw exactly that. Check the center. That's Carson Schooning. He's coming right at you. Whoops. Number 59 is able to move Henley and pick up the first down. When your center has the athletic ability to do that, it's such a nice bonus. Play action again for Lance. He wants the big shot downfield and making the reception, breaking off the route. It's once again Phoenix Sproles. He's got another Bison first down inside Delaware territory. 
The Bison continued to give false reads. There was another one. The Bison showed a, a, a running play coming to you, to the camera. That did not happen, obviously. It was a pass play, but half of the uh, Blue Hens defense, red run, opened up the outside, so Lance had a lot of room on the uh, with, without much inside help. So NDSU is doing a lot of things up front to disguise what was play, what the, the play intends to be. Give this time to the outside, and this is Kapuris. Jimmy Kapuris getting the edge, working off a block from Gindorf. And he gets inside the 40 to the 39, and that should move the sticks once again. I thought I uh, saw Kobe Johnson throw a good one, too. Check out number 24 on the edge. Kapuris on the handoff, the cut there from Johnson. That was really well blocked. We saw Gindorf getting locked up there with Tim Boyd. Poindexter, one of the backup linebackers for the Blue Hens. Two tight ends at the bottom of your screen again. Mathis in motion. Lance to throw. Ty Brooks makes the catch. Henley comes up to make the tackle at the 25. But we're seeing a nice variety here from Tyler Roll on this drive. I love what the two tight ends did on that particular instance. They opened it actually up for Brooks underneath. Had to honor it as we hit the quarter. Bison with the lead. Yeah, moving right down the field again after the Kapuris run. Ty Brooks takes the reception and NDSU down to the 25-yard line of Delaware. <laughs> Trey Lance liking things so far. Bison lead at 10-5 after one quarter play here in Newark, Delaware. See the total offensive yards after the first quarter. North Dakota State over 100 yards better, and fortunately for the Blue Hens to still be in the game, they got the big special teams play on the blocked punt and the long return on the kickoff. Other than that, it, it has been all NDSU. First and 10 for NDSU. Johnson again. Not much room this time. He is swallowed up and swallowed under. Sea of blue jerseys in the area. So Sal Moro plays that cat linebacker position coming in to make the tackle. Yeah, he's a guy that lost 30 pounds uh, from a down defensive lineman, which is why he has the number he does to be able to play that versatile position where you either have your hand on the ground or you're playing that linebacker spot. So he really sold out on that cap position this year. And Coach Rocco uh, indicated that a couple of times how well he's played. Play action again. Lance, he's going to go out to Sproles out of the back of the end zone and really good coverage. That ball hung up there by Nigel Hill. There is a flag. If you want me to guess, I'm going to guess Plank holding Ellison. I thought a lot of contact with the tight end. Nope, I'm wrong. A legal man downfield on NDSU. Don't see that penalty called very much anymore with all the RPOs and things that have entered the game. Ineligible receiver downfield offense, number 82. Penalties declined, third down. And that goes on Ellison, who must have been lined was up he, in a he spot. He must have been covered then. That was covered. Okay. Because he was the guy I thought downfield was being held, but as it turns out, <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be there. North Dakota State over two today on third down, but very good this season, leading the FCS 14 of 23. This will be a big one here. Trey Lance setting up the screen. Cofield has some room to run. He's got a first down to the corner. And Cofield, touchdown. Perfect play call. Delaware was coming not so much from the blitz. Delaware's blitz pressure percentage is only 17%. They did not blitz much. Nodak Insurance Company replay. But soon as Cofield is able to clear, and right here he's clear, he makes one nice move, beats one tackle, and then gets in. And Krosa knocks through the extra point, and NDSU converts a big third down into a touchdown. Adam Cofield from Trey Lance, 24 yards on the touchdown. And the Bison extend the lead now to 17-5 here early in the second quarter from Newark. Bobcat scoring recap, a beautiful drive from North Dakota State. Eight plays, 75 yards, a nice variety there from Tyler Roll as the Bison cash in on third and nine as Cofield takes 
The screen pass all the way in for the score. And Wegner bounces this one down at the five and Hounds are unable to handle it on the Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. On the touchdown with a screen pass, this is not as easy as you think to have your offensive line. They have to sell the fact that they are blocking all out, but knowing at the last minute they're going to let Delaware come through. They do. Look at the double team. It was a beautiful double team at the point of attack, and Cofield makes a nice move to the outside and is able to slam his way in. But uh, the Bison have to kind of sell the fact they're blocking, then double team the main guy in the middle before, and, and Cofield caught it right behind him. Well executed. I really like what the Bison coaches are doing play calling right now. Sun coming out from underneath the clouds for the first time today, and Kehoe delivers high, and that's incomplete. Marquise Bridges right on the coverage as Gene Coleman was the intended target. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. The stands on the left, you see, that's the, that's where the $60 million is going initially into the stadium. And then about $20 million more will redo the side we're at. So Delaware is committed to this stadium upgrading it for its football program. And another incompletion as Kehoe tried to swing it out to Bryce Damali. And boy, it's tough. Tough when you got number 42, Jabril Cox, blanketing a tight end. Well, Damali is their best pass catcher. We talked about that. And the uh, Bison coaches say, well, number 42 is going to be on him. And we just saw why. And you talked about the renovation. And Rich Gannon, Joe Flacco, two former quarterbacks here at Delaware, that went on the NFL, had a lot of success, made a lot of money, they, thankfully, they for the Blue Hens, has fronted a lot of money here to get this renovation done. Yeah, there was a time where Delaware was kind of quarterback you in the FCS, no doubt about it. Scott Bruner, you go back then, he played in the NFL. And the flag comes out, ball and start. somebody moved there on the Blue Hens side of the ball. Ball start. Offense, number two, five yards, third down. That is Chichi Amachi. This pre-snap, pre, excuse me, Brian, the pre-snap movement, I thought that what the Bison would, were going to do it a little bit more. They want to try and take Kehoe, his eyes, and change them. You saw the steps between, between those two guys. That's Cox, and that is also Hanky. They were up jabbing, jabbing at the line, and it caused the guy way out here, not even in on the play, to flinch. So it's not just the eyes of the quarterback you're influencing when you show false movement. Delaware has been at a lot of third and longs. The Blue Hens 0 for 4 so far in third down as Kehoe has a nice clean pocket. And again, it is broken up. A tight window there for Coleman and Bridges bats it away. It may sound redundant because we say it every week, but I tell you, Marquise Bridges and Josh Hayes, but especially Bridges, their ball skills at the point, the high point of where that pass are, they are tremendous. This is the second time on this drive that number nine has been able to do that. Close on the ball in perfect position. Don't reach across with your back shoulder, front shoulder clean, rip the ball out of there. Put away again by Roth. And the fair catch made there by Trevor Heights at the 40-yard line. Good field position for North Dakota State once again. 17-5 Bison. North Dakota State with the first uh, with the football on its own 40-yard line. 12-point lead. Ray Lance's numbers so far: six of eight for 73 yards. Not much room that time for Ty Brooks. Cam Kitchen, one of the defensive tackles on the bottom of that pile. Shift trade motion is what the Bison call the, the pre-snap movement, and the tight ends do most of it for NDSU. They did not do much of it against Delaware, and uh, Coach Roll and the coaching staff wanted to see how Delaware is going to move pre-snap, and you'll see probably Ben Elson. There he goes. He moves. That's, that's a shift trade motion to try to influence the defense. Give to Cofield on the edge again, cutting it back up, and it's taken down after a gain of a few. And it looks like Anthony Paletti was the one, or excuse me, Matt Palmer was in to make that tackle. That's what I liked about Adam Cofield, probably more than some of the other NDSU backs. If he keeps going and extending and spreading, he's running out of room and he's not getting upfield. I think he turns and decides, I'll get what I can get as well as any back the Bison have. 
Colfield's numbers, three carries, 27 yards. Also had the touchdown reception. So third and four here for the Bison. Lance, plenty of time to survey. Throws, and Watson tried to stretch out for it, get some separation, unable to do so. And that's a three and out for the Bison, and a big hold there for Delaware to keep this thing within striking distance. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Really nice job there by Henley. He sat right there with Watson, and you saw the Christian have to try to make that last second move because the pass was a little bit too far to his wide side. Garrett Wegner back to boot this one away. It's about as aggressive as I've seen the corners from Delaware today. And playing a lot off, a lot off in that coverage, as you mentioned. Wegner, as good as anybody, putting the ball inside the 20 yard line. He's going to angle this one towards the corner. Might have a little too much on it, and it does as the wind carries it into the end zone, and Delaware will start on the 20. Take a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to the Valley News Live Facebook page, and we can show those in the fourth quarter. A pretty good showing from the Delaware fans as well. They were anticipating somewhere around 15,000 today. Not sure if we got there, but I'm sure it's close. We did find, while trying to find our parking spot, how <laughs> interesting it can be. I'm game day the, around here with different lots and different spots and tailgate here, and uh, it was, it was fun and the construction yep. as well that has made things a little tricky in this area well there's just not any room for any backs to go anywhere North Dakota State selling out again and Destin, Destin Talbert. Talbert from his corner spot came crashing to make that tackle but you can only block so many people and you're not going to block where Talbert was on the corner but he was not fooled at all on the RPO uh, that was a run read and with the uh, Kehoe in there. It, it looks like an RPO, but actually Delaware probably has more designed runs out of that, so he's giving it more than he's probably optioning it on a play like that last one. Michael Tutsi on the blitz. Kehoe is going to let it fly, and nowhere near the intended target. Owen Tyler, Destin Talbert was out there in coverage, and another third and long for the Blue Hens coming up. Well, Kehoe took a shot, but he put the ball about the only place he could because he read the blitz. It was coming. He got hit hard. And he tried to go right where Tutsi was. But an untouched safety with a full head of steam, that's going to hurt. And Kehoe will go to the sideline here on third and 11 as Henderson once again enters the game. Again, Henderson not known as a passer. He obviously has played quarterback. He can throw it, but he's more of a runner. Townsend in motion. Bison coming with pressure again. Henderson flushed, and down he goes once again. North Dakota State continuing to apply the pressure, and he was finished off on the play by Cole Karch. Let's pause for a quick message from Shields. Pretty short punt this time as Height comes up to take the fair catch at the 48-yard line. And he ran well, into him, but I don't think he influenced the catch at all. Yeah, Dalen Darian was flying down there and tried to avoid him. A good field position again for North Dakota State. The last sack, Brian, the thing I like about it was that the Bison showed the new quarterback nothing. They had, he had no idea pre-snap that there was going to be pressure coming, and then the Bison came all out. Nodak Insurance Company replay. The catch has already been made. Just a little bit of contact there, but nothing to, not enough to interfere with a fair catch signal. Well, we're midway through the second quarter, and Delaware has seven total yards so far. NDSU has just been owning the line of scrimmage. Trey Lance back to work. Little flip to the outside here to Johnson. Puts a little shake on Zubalaga and finds some room to the outside. Gains about eight yards. Down to the 39. Nigel Hill finally forcing Johnson out of bounds. Good first down pickup. This Delaware defense has no, no idea what it is supposed to be reading right now. The Bison once again uh, did some false movement. Showed rush that way, pitched to the far side. Two tight ends again with Babbage and Gindor. Stretch play to Brooks. 
Finding a seam to the outside. He's got a first down before the Blue Hens shut it down at the 34. Saw so Noah Platt come in from the safety spot, and he's doing a little jawing with Ty Brooks. That's not one guy you want to talk with. Ty can talk with the yeah. best of them. <laughs> well, Noah Plack was described as really, 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 really physical. That's how he was described to me. But I thought uh, Garrett Malstrom, 39, made a really nice adjustment on his lead full back, uh, full back block to help open up, keep the outside seam open for Brooks to be able to pick up the first down. Play action this time. Lance firing on the run on target to Watson who juggled it for a moment. And he made the catch. Great concentration there for the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida down to the 22. Hill on the coverage for the Blue Heads. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This is where repetition is your friend. You see where the break was made and where the catch was made. It was about a five yard difference. So Watson sells all the way to the 14 yard line, goes up and makes a great play on the ball. Excellent hands here. And of course, your quarterback Lance has to know that that is a comeback route, that he is coming back toward you. The ruling of a completion is under further review. And the replay officials will take a look at it, but it looked like he secured it with a foot down before a falling good, out of bounds. Yeah, a really solid battle for the ball between those two. And Hill is the only returning guy in the secondary for Delaware. They had a guy by the name of Nasir Adderley, who's a safety that was a draft pick by the Chargers as a teammate of Easton Sticks out in Los yeah. Angeles, who was a real good one. Nigel Hill, one of the captains, redshirt junior, started at Virginia Tech as a freshman and then kind of struggled his second year there before making the decision to come to Delaware. To but come back to Delaware, he's from Maryland. Here's what they're looking at in the replay booth. Okay, there's definitely a foot in. Is the ball secured through the... Oh, is there enough there to overturn it? I say catch. I'm with you. Also may have looked like he had that knee kind of hit the ground as he was bringing it into his body. Matt Overton, your official. This is a CAA officiating crew. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So the 13-yard completion of Christian Watson will stand. And, and the, what you're seeing at home is the replay booth. We are the provider of the replay official. You saw that left hand stay in control of the football. I think that's kind of what they were looking at more than if he was in, because I certainly thought he was in. Nine first downs for the Bison, just one for the Blue Hens so far here today. Cofield slipped as he tried to make his cut. Noah Plack was running up hard from his safety position, gain of two. Now the Bison have shown power and not run power a lot. There's been a bunch of different plays run off of this basic look, and this time NDSU stays with it. Cofield trying to cut off the pulling guard and just lost his footing. And this turf is in good shape. It's only two years old, so that's certainly not a factor here today. Lance play action, dumping it off. Boy, Malstrom all by himself in the flat. He is up in it on the play by white end, but is able to get down close to a first down at the 12, and I think he's got it. Should move the sticks. One of the most fun lines I heard in our conversation with Tyler Roll this week, Brian, and you'll remember this, our offense is endless with what we can do with personnel. So just think about that if you're trying to defend this team. And, and he's right. Now you're... Fullbacks in the flat, you know, Bison haven't done that a lot in the recent years, but Lukey's got a catch. And Maybe someone's shaking up. Is that Dom Cavado who's being held up a little bit right now, and he looks like he's in some pain. And now he goes down Cavado's, to the turf. He is the best defensive lineman that the Blue Hens have. Show your Bison pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Well, I mentioned Tyler Roll, the offensive coordinator. T. Roll also said that Cavado reminds him a lot of Nate Tangway and what Tangway brought to this Bison defense in his time. 
winning championships. It's many of the same things that Cavado has relied yeah. on to do. It's pretty high praise. Nate Tangway is a good one for North Dakota State and was able to battle his way back from an ACL tear and have a productive senior season. But Cavado's part of that class that Coach Rocco is really pumped about. He's a redshirt sophomore, so he's been in the program for his third year. Rocco's been here for three years. Yeah, that's Tyler Roll, too. Well, you need to go silent count today with the crowd and all that stuff. He goes, well, we're prepared for it, but it doesn't feel like the crowd has really been a factor today in terms of trying to disrupt North Dakota State's offense. Again, Cavado, he, was, he, he had an injured knee in the, this, uh, this summer, and he was cleared to play in the first game. He did start. He was in Fargo last year, started in the game against uh, the Bison at the Fargo Dome. You know, his mom got ill. He withdrew from school shortly after that Bison game, and then uh, the family situation is getting much better, and he's back here playing for the hands. Well, North Dakota State, when we talked to Tyler Roll, too, about personnel, he said, I really like 11 personnel, and I really like 22 personnel. We've seen a lot of 22 so far here today, and they've run a lot of different things with that <laughs> personnel grouping. Well, here's tw here's 20, here's tw uh, 12, meaning one running back, two tight ends, both tight ends right here. Let's see what they do. See the total yardage heavily in favor of North Dakota State so far. Brooks, he's going to bounce it outside. It's a race to the corner. Ty Brooks speed as he turns the corner and take it down just short of the goal line. Giving chase that time was Tim Boindexter. And he was able to at least keep Ty Brooks out of the end zone as Nigel Hill gave a little help from his corner spot. This is really Ty Brooks at his best. I mean, how many yards in throughout his high school and college career do you think he's done by just bouncing and turning the corner? He's able to dip that inside shoulder and keep that momentum going. The Bison are knocking on the door once again. And yes, you can get a first down here inside the two-yard line without scoring. Brooks, boy, taken down immediately. Sal Morrow came crashing down, and that's a loss of two. Well, if Morrow doesn't, if Morrow allows the running back to get to the line of scrimmage, it is going to be an easy touchdown. Nodak Insurance Company replay is on the top of this screen. You're going to see number 75, Dylan Raidens, just blowing people up. But that that play couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. If the Bison could have got there, they would have scored. Now it's third down. So third and three at the five. Bison need the two-yard line to get a first down. Now Gindor and Ellison, the two tight ends, are on top of your screen. Lance with time. Fires high and dragged down by the defensive back with Christian Watson and incomplete. I believe it was Justice Henley in coverage. Or was it Hill? Speaker blocked me. I didn't see Yeah, it was tough to see. There is a speaker kind of right in our line of sight. So Prosa will come on for the field goal attempt. This one certainly should be a little bit easier. A 23-yard attempt the way it's spotted right now. Rosa knocks it through to increase the lead to 20 to 5 with 6.57 to go. Here in the first half from Newark, Delaware, the Bison. Continuing to try to get distance themselves from the Blue Hens here this afternoon. <laughs> 20 to 5 North Dakota State lead, 6.57 to go until halftime. Garrett Wagner getting set to boot this one away once again. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Good boot that time by Wagner. And a touchback will set up the Blue Hens on the 25-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines to Ryan Gellner. Hey, guys. A first International Bank and Trust sideline report with the heat here at Delaware. North Dakota State has rented a couple of big industrial fans that they are using on the sidelines. It's obviously to keep the players cool. They brought those fans in. When the sun comes out, guys, it warms up about five 
degrees, maybe even eight degrees, a little bit warmer. It's very humid. Very interesting. One of the things North Dakota State is doing this year, when the guys come into halftime, they have more electrolytes put into their Gatorade solution. Certain players are predetermined who will get that solution. They did sweat testing earlier this season. Those players will get more electrolytes in their solution. I'm told it doesn't taste very good, but they'll do it nonetheless. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And there was a design run for Henderson, and that's one thing that scared David Braun, the defensive coordinator of North Dakota State. We talked to him this week. He goes, he's a guy that has some ability when he gets out in open space. Yeah, Keo's the returning starter, the redshirt senior, but he's also the guy that the Bison today would prefer to be on the field because Henderson's uh, playbook is much different. It's almost like having to worry about two different uh, offenses depending on who the quarterback is. Ron saying he's really not a progression passer, but still has the ability to do some things, escaping the pocket. Henderson again will run it. And more room up the middle before he is taken down by Destin Talbert. Gain of six. Jackson Hankey also in there to clean it up. Yeah, make no mistake, that was a design quarterback run. Fullback Owen Tyler. Number 21 was one of the guys that helped kick out to open up the seam. Well, what Delaware was doing obviously wasn't working. You just didn't mention a bunch of stats on how poor the offense has been. This is about as many yards as Keogh is back in now. Will Knight is the tailback, and he'll get the carry. And Knight has a nice lane there as Tony Pierce had to come back and make the tackle from the backside, but a first down for the Blue Hens up to midfield. Best blocked play of the day from Delaware's perspective, I, I believe. The, really really did a good job of opening up that seam and Pierce from his right defensive end trailing the play had to make the tackle. Kehoe to throw here comes the pressure and down he goes Jackson Hankey and Aaron Merkadel both came flying through the A gap and took him down. Loss of 10. Both linebackers untouched you're, you're sending both of them thinking one of them is going to get picked off and the other guy in your Nodak insurance company replay look at that the cross that's a beautiful job of of what we talked about off the top number 77 that's the center that's Farinella and Farinella that the quarterback was down is under further review and yeah, the ball did come loose there we'll have to take another look at that was it Farinella that fair, fell on it though LT wasn't sure. But the Bison again thought that they could do some things against Farinella. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Hankey on this side takes care of the center, allowing Mercadell to be free to get to the quarterback. So you go across the face of the center in whichever direction he decides, you're real good on the other side. Couldn't really see from that angle. The football was loose. Okay. Mercadell has a, he's down. Yep. Yeah, he's down. The ruling on the field was confirmed, second down. But that this is a really good uh, idea of, of how you game plan for an offensive line and then how you execute that game plan because that's what the Bison did. They didn't do it with defensive linemen on this particular instance, but they did it with their two linebackers. Henke engages the center, Mercadell runs free. Four sacks today for North Dakota State and the Bison didn't have a lot of sacks through the first couple of games, but really getting after Kehoe today. One of our keys to the game, too. Motion man gets the football, and boy, NDSU again. Michael Tutsi coming in and making a nice open field tackle. Take it down, Austin Haberstrom is one of the back of wide receivers. As a person who used to play strong safety just a little bit, that play really makes you smile because the way that Hanky run, he just, he reads run, and he just comes down and he and he blows the play up. He starts 12 yards away from the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle at the line of scrimmage. That's beautiful stuff from number 25. Yeah, Tutsi, very Colton Hegel esque is how I would like to describe that. Third and long, setting up a little screen here, and that is Will Knight, the freshman, will get what he can. Tutsi again coming up to upend him after a gain of nine, but well short of a first down. Okay, remember the Bison scored a touchdown on a screenplay? That was very successful because there were five or six blue jerseys that all believed that it was, you know, sucked into the screen. The Bison only rushed three. Plenty of people on a third and really long. 
So the screen really ineffective against the three-man rush. And the one thing that Danny Rocco said in his press conference this week is we can't get behind the chains. We got to, you know, continue to be successful on first down. We've seen too many plays, especially on first down, LT, where they've gone backwards on themselves in second and third and long. Low snap, but Pritchard able to handle it. A wobbler as Height comes up to take the fair catch at the 20. Oh, Black a little bump. Yeah, but that won't be a penalty either because he was engaged with Sproles. Sproles was trying to block him. North Dakota State 306 here until halftime and one timeout left. See how aggressive Tyler Roll or Matt Entz in this case really wants to get with his team holding a comfortable lead. Saw a glimpse there of Dimitri Williams by Zeb Nolan, the backup quarterback, and Williams, a lower body injury. He is in uh, his warm-up today. He is not playing, and that's why we've seen more Kobe Johnson here in the first half. Lance's numbers so far here in the first half. Lance play action. He's going to take a shot downfield. Batted up in the air as Ellison went down, was covered up by Noah Plack. Had his hands on it, but couldn't corral it. Well, that's what you call a 50-50 ball. Throw it up and see if your guy can get it. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation with your tight end against Plack, and the Nodak Insurance Company replay comes right at you. Elson tries to high point it, the left hand from Plack. And again, we mentioned how physical, even though you know, Ben's a big kid, but. Some linemen pulling for Ty Brooks, who squeaks through a hole. And again, it's Plack coming up and making a nice tackle after a gain of seven. See why Delaware likes this guy. So Black in on this tackle. A little bit of a play action, too, because these safeties come so hard down into the run game that the Bison thought they might be able to play action and get to him a little bit, but so far it didn't work, and Plack was in perfect position on that one-on-one -on -one against Elfs in the play before. Trey Lance has carried the ball a few times today, but have not seen him much here lately but the in the nice, run game. The nice second down run really does set up third and shorter. Lance dropping it off to Ellison, who makes the reception right at the 30-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down as Whitehead makes the tackle. Probably only two reads on this play for Lance. Everybody else is trying to clear out the middle. The front side drag, that was Elfson. That was open. There was one other uh, player a little bit behind him. But everyone else on the edges to try to free up the middle of the field. First down. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Lance, deep ball, separation, caught! Phoenix Broles at the 28-yard line. The pitch and the catch were good too, Brian, but I tell you, the pass protection was spot on. Lance had all kinds of time to survey, set his feet, and get a good arching throw down the field. Now Phoenix. you can really be aggressive. Three receptions now, 72 yards, 41 yards on that connection from Lance to Sproles. Johnson in motion, he'll get the give, get a great lead block, and there goes Kobe Johnson inside the 10, down to the six-yard line before Whitehead finally makes the tackle. Well, these running backs for North Dakota State, they do a nice job blocking at the point of attack, too, if they LT. Ty There's Brooks a, right a, there. Brooks with one and then Sproles downfield on this Nodak Insurance Company replay. Johnson tries to step inside it, gets all the way down to the six yard line, but a big play through the passing game, big play through the running game, and bang, look at that. You're right back down at the six with a minute to go. You still have your timeout. Mathis and Watson are the two receivers, two tight ends at the top of your screen as well. Lance dropping it off, dangerous pass. Closing quickly to make the tackle. Was the linebacker Garrett? The, the As Cofield makes the reception. Brian, I think the Bison go back to that play because it was wide open the last time the Bison had this situation. But Lance is selling it uh, a little bit too much, probably with his eyes off to his left. Andy Issue will burn his final timeout here with 36 seconds left until halftime. Remember the pass that sailed high to Watson in the back of the end zone? Cofield was wide open on, on that particular play, so which is one of the reasons I think Andy Issue went back to it. But I don't think Trey Lance, if you looked at his eyes, sold the center of the field enough to try to keep 
the linebacker off of where Cofield was. Delaware can just hold North Dakota State to a field goal attempt here. Certainly would be big for the Blue Hands. We'll take another look at it, LT. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This is what I'm talking about. Cofield's going to go out, but watch the head of Lance. I don't think he's looking to the center of the field quite enough to try to freeze the linebacker to allow Cofield space to make the catch and make a move. I think he tipped his hand a little too hard on that particular play. Curious what Tyler Roll dials up here on second and goal from the five, no timeouts left. So if the Bison decide to run the ball, they'll have to get up quickly and run a play or spike it. But we can't spike it though on second down. Lance surveys. Oh, wide open man in the back of the end zone. That is caught. Mr. Touchdown again, Ben Ellison. Once again, I like the design of that particular play and it results in a touchdown. But the Bison use Babbage. Check out 81 coming across. All right, they're looking. Hey, I'm going to throw it to Babbage. Two of the, the Blue Hens go right to him, leaving the back of the end zone open. The last three yards of the end zone is so tough to try to guard all the time. Elson open, but disguised and helped from his tight end. Second touchdown of the season for Ben Ellison in the 13th of his career as Pro has an extra extra point. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Here again in your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Trey Lance looking, and at this point, I'm thinking, hey, he's going to try to squeeze it into Babbage, but he was double covered, and when someone's double covered on the line, someone else is open on the backside, and that is, as Brian mentioned, Mr. Touchdown. You know, it's so hard defensively. You have three tight ends, and Gindorf was out in the, in the route as well. How do you guard all three of those guys? Uh, you don't. <laughs> we, just saw, we just saw that. You don't. The re replay didn't lie. Boy, a nice drive for North Dakota State, and a lot of it set up from that 41-yard reception from Phoenix Bowles and a beautiful deep ball from Trey Lance. Bobcat scoring recap, seven plays, 80 yards, and just 236. But, you know, the, the 41 in the pass play takes half of that, and then what's left is the, the next 40, well, 39 yards, and a three-fourths of that on the next handoff when Johnson gets it down to the six. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your playing season with Peterson Farm Seed. Wedner sends this one through the end zone, and Delaware will start at the 25 yard line. And boy, Just the Blue Hens got a lot to talk about at halftime. Absolute backbreaker to give up that touchdown right there. The Bison doing exactly what you want to do at the road, uh, on the road. Start kind of gouging the heart out of your opponent. Well, you know, domination, it, it's a word that you can use or not use, but. 268 total yards for one team and 31 for the other. That is about as close to domination as you can think about. Two of eight, 11 yards in the pick for Kehoe. Tough day for him, and they're just going to go into victory formation and get out of here. Yeah. Let's get to halftime <laughs> formation. Yeah, get to halftime formation. But the Bison have given key, especially Kehoe. He has had so many different looks. Blitz combinations have been coming his way. He has. You know, you're two for eight because, not because you can't throw the ball, it's because you can't get the uh, the opening to do it. He's been really uncomfortable in the back. Matt Ince is standing by with Ryan Gellner. What a defensive effort, Matt. You've held them to 31 yards. You've been able to get after the quarterback. First down defense has been so good. They are, you know, but probably right now, my thought is special teams and getting that rectified. We're in the red zone. We came away with three. We should have had seven. We're on the three. So there's plenty of things for us to get better at at halftime. Offensively, you've been very balanced. I assume you continue that in the second half. Why wouldn't we? Man, we can, we can, again, it's about efficiency, staying ahead. I've seen a bunch of third mediums, third and shorts, getting big runs on first down to put us in manageable longer downs. We'll talk to you after the game. Good luck. You got, thank you. Guys, that's Matt Ann. Just another day at the office for Trey Lance, 12 of 17 for 145 yards and two touchdowns. This guy continues yeah. to impress here. And Trey came into this game as the number one player in the FCS in points responsible for it. Yeah, and pass efficiency, North Dakota State. We step aside. The Proceed Halftime Report is coming up. Beth Hool and Alex Egan back in studio. We're back with you here in about 20 minutes in Newark. And Delaware will have the football first. As we look at Trey Lance, solid first half to play for Lance. 12 of 17 for 145 yards and two touchdowns. 
And here are the North Dakota State first half possessions. Again, Delaware starting it off after the Bison three and out with the blocked punt for a safety. And then a touchdown field goal, the one punt from Wegner after a drive stalled out on a three and out. A field goal from Krosa, and then the late touchdown was the real big one, I think, LT, to send an exclamation point after the first couple of quarters. Townsend retreats to his own end zone, will take a knee. Well, the follow-up on what Coach Rocco was talking about, especially with the Bison defensive line dominating them, 1.1 yards per play in the first half. 29 yards, 26 plays. And 0 of 7 on third down as well. Here was some farm seed kickoff there from Garrett Wegner, and here comes Pat Kehoe. Tough first half for Kehoe. Two of eight, 11 yards, and the one interception from Tutsi. Those first half numbers and stats, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef farmers and ranchers. I'll be interested to see just how much pressure the Bison want to bring here in the second half. Coleman, the motion man, give to Andre Robinson, and again, not much room in the middle. Jack Darnell, among others, getting in there to make that tackle. I think Darnell was the first one there. He also got some help, I think, from Cole Cart. So when your defensive tackle and your nose guard are in on a tackle, that's always a good thing because that means they did their job, did not get moved, and kept their gap. Just a gain of one there on first down. Kehoe. And a rollout running out of time, and he'll just throw it away. Well covered by North Dakota State. Trey, Lan Trey Lance made the catch, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a juggling catch, but a catch, what, uh, it was made. You notice that time, too, LT, that a designed rollout for Kehoe to try to get him out of the pocket and maybe away from some of that pressure North Dakota State has shown. A definite slant on that offensive line, too, with help off to his left-handed quarterback, obviously more comfortable, probably rolling to his throwing arm side. Another third and long for Delaware. Four receivers in the formation, plus Robinson in the backfield with Kehoe. Bison heating it up again with pressure, and Kehoe again feels it. Jabril Cox, Spencer Wagey, both knock him down. That's the fifth sack of the game now for North Dakota State. Derek Tuska playing a linebacker on that particular play. Nodak Insurance Company replay. All three of them coming. Every linebacker is... Cox gets it, uh, it meaning the sack, and also Spencer Wagey close by. Too many white jerseys, not enough uh, blue ones to try to keep everybody off of Kehoe's back. I just think Delaware's got to go with Henderson in some extended snaps. Pritchard back out for another punt. Started his career at Maryland, actually was a starting punter as a true freshman as Height takes the punt. And nice nifty return there by Height before he is tackled on the play by Liam Trainer. And more good field position for North Dakota State at midfield. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Kobe Johnson will be the tailback to start this drive for North Dakota State. As we look at the first half numbers, the pass rating 181, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef ranchers and farmers. Play action, and again, an open man in the flat, and that has Ben Ellison making another reception. Noah Plack on the tackle, but a gain of 12 and a first down. Lance had plenty of options. It was uh, a flood, a deep, a middle, and a short route. Ellison was the short route. The middle route was Christian Watson. He was mega, mega wide open. As nobody from the safety position came down, they stayed true to their two deep. And Lance had three options, and two of them wide open. And his efficiency has just been impressive so far this year, coming in at over 80%. This time a runoff tackle and throwing a shoulder in there and getting the initial contact was Javar Garrett on Kobe Johnson after a game of two. Drew Nichols have not called his name much today. Middle linebacker for Delaware, about a nice job keeping him out of plays. He was fourth on the team in tackles heading into today. And again, the loss of Johnny Buchanan, a really significant loss for Delaware. Overloaded here to the boundary side. The Bison are going to run it. Cofield 
runs it up in there, but a lot of blue jerseys turning things back. Gain of a couple more to the 34. Cam Kitchen, a big boy in the middle there, plugging things up. There was Sal Morrow. Certainly a lot of players on the right side of that Bison offense set up, but it looked to me, and I didn't see the number of who it was, but, but Zach Johnson got somebody up underneath him, underneath him, and, it, and Johnson was unable to get the push, and so the Bison couldn't get the yardage. So whoever was head up on Johnson did a really good job, and I think that was Kitchen. Watson, Kapuris, and Cole Jacobs are your three receivers there at the top side of your screen here on third and about five. Lance guns it. Oh, Kapuris made a tremendous adjustment, reaching back across his body, and the reception is made to the 23 in a first down. During fall camp, I had a conversation with Coach Hedberg asking who is starting to emerge in the slot back position. And he kept saying, he goes, I don't know how many reps that Kapuris is going to get, but he catches everything we throw to him. And that on the Nodak Insurance Company replay was a beautiful catch because that ball had some smoke and it was behind him. Great job by number 19. Back to the ground game again. And Sabian Clark, his first carry of the day. About four yards to the 20 and inside the 20 yard line before he is taken down. That's the type of movement on the offensive line that the Bison had all of last week against UND and more of it on this uh, on this particular play. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Just a beautiful job. Johnson is in there. Bolson with a nice job. Also Carson shooting kind of doubling up. Whitehead again coming in from a safety spot to make the tackle. Lance will just dump it off to Kapuris who's left alone and Kapuris Got ahead it. to the 12 yard line before Garrett makes the tackle and that moves the chains again. Second catch here on this drive for Kapuris. And frankly the two the first two catches of his career for Jimmy Kapuris. Boy, interesting story with that young guy where he started off his career at Western Michigan, spent a year at the College of DuPage. He had 17 career touchdowns his senior year of high school at Lamont, Illinois. Had a knee injury here when he initially got here, now getting an opportunity in his senior season. Johnson in motion. Oh, Lance, design run. First time we've seen him duck it and run. Nichols was right there to take down Trey Lance after a gain of three. Well, that was a nice read by Nichols, number 51, who you just mentioned. We see him right there. He saw that ball come out and then tried to close as fast as he possibly could on Trey Lance because we know and he knows that Lance can bounce it to the outside. No, that insurance company replay also helped there from I think it was Kitchen, number 99. But yeah, that was well read by number 51, the linebacker. Cofield remains in the game at tailback. Ty Brooks almost fell down on the jet sweep and now flushed as Lance. And we'll get what he can. He's going to be a little bit short of a first down by a yard. Nichols in on another tackle. Looked to me that Lance was trying to wait for the wheel to open up, and that was Cofield coming out of the backfield to get into the end zone, but he ran out of time. And so he muscled his way close to first down yardage. North Dakota State, three of seven on third down today. This is third and a long one. Balls from the fullback, and I believe that's Babich in front of him. Play action. Lance running out of time, firing into the end zone. Caught Noah Gindor. Touchdown. What I really like about that play was the patience that that Trey Lance showed because Gindorf was covered on his initial break and then he was covered about about three steps later. Nodak Insurance Company replay Gindorf top of your screen. He's going to drag back across. Now he waits and he waits and he waits and he's still fairly covered squeezes it in there one hands this baby in for the touchdown. Well done on both ends. Uh, Aaron snap there on the extra point. More special team stuff for coach Ench to talk about. And a flag is out. Intentional grounding. <laughs> Kicking team. Number 36. Penalties decline. Point is no good. I don't think they mind him no, throwing it away. A, that was a really <laughs> good penalty, son. <laughs> Trey Lance, his third touchdown pass of the day, and Gindorf makes a great catch. Bison up 33-5 here midway through the third quarter on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard.
Well, the buy is an air attack for the second straight week. Nine receivers have caught a pass. The buy is really spreading it around here early in 2019. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planting season with Peterson Farm Seed. Townsend hesitated initially and found a lane. And then is wrapped up as a flag comes in. How about Luke Works, true freshman, was a big recruit for Matt Entz, came in to make that tackle on special teams. And we talked off the top on how some true freshmen and a few more were traveling on this particular weekend. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number 11, 10 yards, first down. So guys like Luke Wirtz and, and uh, Wadarsik and Watching on the Nodak Insurance Company replay, there's your block in the back right there. So now Delaware backed up again as Henderson comes out to take the snap here to start this drive for the Blue Hens. Room up the middle this time and breaking free for a big one with Will Knight, redshirt freshman, we talked about him, had originally committed to Delaware. On signing day, flipped to Old Dominion, played four games there, remained his redshirt status, kept his redshirt status, came back to Delaware, here he is. Well, a high school Delaware star, the all-time leading rusher in Delaware's high school history, right there, number 25, you just saw in that Nodak Insurance Company replay. So finally a play, explosive play is how much room this time for Will Knight? Boy, there's a lot of white shirts getting penetration in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Costner so. Ching was was really deep into there, and I thought that uh, Barty Opu made a real nice adjustment, too, from his right defensive end across the, the back. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Anderson reading. Here's Opu, 97. Look at him just hunting down. And, and Ching Cox. with it. And Cox finishes off, but Ching again with the really good penetration. Coach Rocco talked about the way that Bison defensive line is played. Henderson running again. Wagey giving chase. Henderson dumps it off and finds a man running free, and that's Knight. Keeps his feet all the way to midfield. So Henderson keeping the play alive, and then just at the last second, able to find Knight out of the backfield. Those are the things that Henderson can bring your team that Kehoe doesn't do quite as well. Delaware trying to speed it up here. 22 yards on that passing play. And again, Henderson with three white shirts giving chase, able to find some room as Cox kind of let the man run free. And that's what opened it up. Oh, Henderson again in trouble. Tuska giving chase. Now Bridges on a corner blitz. And this thing thrown about 12 yards out of bounds. And a flag coming in. And I think they might get Dawson Weber for holding in the middle of the field. Uh, that's the same thing I saw. Buying, building, or refinancing. Holy Start with a defense. Number 27, 10 yards, automatic first down. Buying, building, or refinancing start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard free approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank. For a better way of life, member FDIC. There's a different speed to the Delaware offense when Henderson is out there at quarterback. Everything's just quicker. Anderson will flip the back over now to his right side. And trying to hit the hole, Karch really close things up and then a bunch of Bison helped, including Derek Tuska finish him off after a gain of a couple. There's Robinson with the carry. About the time you said Karch, I also saw 55 in that play too. Aaron Mercadell was able to get in there and disrupt it early. Here's some tempo, and again, it's going to be Robinson with the carry. Tutsi flying in again and run support. Gain of seven will bring up third and one. Now we pause for a quick word from the Bank of North Dakota. My plan was to get a degree in engineering, and with the help of a student loan from Bank of North Dakota, I did. If you want to build something solid, you need a plan. Bank of North Dakota, helping you achieve more. Pat Kehoe back in here on third down. They had a couple of guys run up to the line of scrimmage at the last minute. And who are they going to get here? Both sides were moving. Tuska jumped off saying one of the tight ends moved on the end of the line. We had like two linemen in the backfield next to Kehoe there. That was a weird formation. Offside. 
defense. Number 91, five yards, first down. And they're going to get Tuska, and that will move the sticks for Delaware. Tuska was the guy who said, I, hey, I, this guy flinched, and so he initiated the contact, but apparently he did not. Henderson back into the game. And we had talked about how this is probably a better personnel grouping with Henderson in the backfield taking the snaps for Delaware. Baez continuing to bring extra bodies. Henderson swallowed up, but he breaks away. And now we'll run what he gets. But Jabril Cox closes quickly. Gain of maybe two up to the 25. Yeah, if Kehoe's in the game, that's a sack. And this is a plus two yards. Boy, Matt Epps, David Braun, they just continue to dial it up. Six and seven man pressures consistently here. Robinson in motion. Knight the give, and he's got room to the outside, and Knight still on his feet to the 10 yard line and stumbling to the eight before he's finished off by Ouija, and it'll be first and goal, Blue Hens. Tyreek Pitts was getting press coverage on the outside from Josh Hayes, and he stays locked up on him. And on this Nodak Insurance Company replay, right there is the block I'm talking about, as you see Hayes not be able to make the play. Oh, Tutsi, a great tackle from behind. Grab it at the feet of Andre Robinson and a loss of one. David Braun saying how much he loves Tutsi in the run game, but said sometimes we have to be <laughs> careful with that because he's sometimes too eager to get down in there. He said this week, you can't play like a linebacker. You got to remember you're a safety this week, not a linebacker like you were against UND. Henderson, oh, that was a dangerous pass. Jabril Cox, Marquise Bridges all over Thyric Pitts. Third and goal. Bridges on the pass coverage and a, just a, in order for <laughs> number 42 to get out there so fast, it, it shows you what he can do when he decides after he makes his read because he broke on the ball. Nodak Insurance Company replay. And right at the top of your screen is Jabril Cox. You see him come into it, gets back into that play and helps Bridges disrupt it. Pitts and Coleman, now Coleman in motion. The top side of the screen here on third and goal. Henderson will throw it up. Catch is made, but a big hit by Dawson Weber at the six-yard line as Pitts made the reception. Weber might have hurt himself on that tackle. Boy, he came down and came down hard. Looked like he was playing a zone position from his safety. Reads the pass, come out of the quarterback's hand, and then closes on it. And the Bison keep Delaware out of the end zone again. A very positive drive for Delaware. 84 yards, 10 plays, and forcing a field goal attempt here from Roth. Jake Roth is already connected today. His second attempt. This one up and good from 24 yards. And Delaware able to get back a field goal, and it's 33 to 8. Three and a half minutes to go on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Bobcat scoring recap, 11 plays, 84 yards as Jake Roth connects on a second field goal of the day. And give credit to Henderson, able to keep some plays alive. He's four of five today for 41 yards passing. He's also run for seven yards. Much better tempo. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. And that is Height. Trevor Height back to take this kickoff at his own three yard line. And Height has a lane. And Height busting through a crease all the way to the 38 before the kicker, Ryan Coe. Got in front of him and made the tackle. We step aside, 3.22 to go in the third quarter. Bison still in control with the football, leading 33-8. Three-eight North Dakota State, 3.22 to go in the third quarter from here in Newark, Delaware. Bison fans, maybe a thousand, maybe a little over a thousand have made the trip here, and some from out here on the East Coast, getting an opportunity to see NDSU and make a drive trip. And there 
here's a look at the numbers for the quarterbacks. Eho and Henderson, it's been tough. They've been under pressure a lot today. Trey Lance has been pretty comfortable, pretty clean throughout the afternoon. Johnson, the motion man inside, give and room this time up the middle. Crashing ahead is Adam Cofield. They pick up on first down of six yards. Nigel Hill coming in to make the tackle. You know, Dom Cavado did went off the field early, and I don't think he can, has come back. And that's another one of the reasons I think the Bison are able to get some chunk yards in the A gap like that last particular play. Babbage Kindorf to the top side of your screen here, the two tight ends. As you continue to move those guys around, as Lance on target, delivered well in a window there to Christian Watson inside Delaware territory to the 45. Playing some pretty soft coverage. Watson had at least five yards to make a nice little timing route. Not much pressure on either end of that pass. Trey Lance just seems so comfortable on the field. He just doesn't ever get rattled, it seems like. Yeah, his, his poise is impressive for being a redshirt freshman. And we saw it on that touchdown play. He just waited and waited and waited till his window opened, and it was a small one. Play action again for Lance. Oh, he's going to air it out, and Christian Watson was tackled, tackled. back at the 23-yard line. And that was probably a smart move for Justice Henley because he was beat. He was grabbing the back of the jersey and then literally just tackled him around the legs, and that'll be 15 against the Blue Hens. Holding. Defense, number 21, 10 yards, automatic, first down. Well, just the holding does, call instead of pass interference. If he doesn't do that, it's a touchdown. He, he was torched off the line and had to speed up. <laughs> Use all the speed he had just to get to the back of Watson's jersey before he grabbed on. Henley, number 21 in the Blue Hens there, actually wants to do what we do. He wants to be a sportscaster when he's done here at Delaware. But that was back-to-back -back looks to Watson, though. Yep. Kind of softened him up with the out, beat him deep. Shift trade motion again, and Austin Avery in this time at fullback, and Kobe Johnson nowhere. Noah Platt coming from the safety position again as we take a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. Again, still time to send us your Homer Watch party picks, and we can show them in the fourth quarter to the Valley News Live Facebook page. Close it in on that fourth quarter as well. 145. to Ellison, but this one blown dead. Ball start. Offense, number 75. Five yards, second down. Go on, Dylan Radens. Left tackle. Pass was targeted to one of those tight ends. Had an interesting conversation with linebacker coach Grant Olson this week and talking about the Bison tight ends, which of course he faces. He says, he just described it as too many twos. They have too many. They're too big. They're too strong. They're too fast. <laughs> That's what the Bison defense or <laughs> offense throws at other teams. Too many twos in the tight end room. Play action to Sabian Clark, and Lance will just dump it off, and that is the second catch in the career for Hunter Lupke. Redshirt freshman that came in here. In high school, this guy was unbelievable. Nearly 5,800 yards and 95 touchdowns in his high school career. Actually, really nice to see that Hunter's back playing again this week because uh, uh, after the he missed the UND game, he got rolled up on in practice a little bit. And so now he's feeling better and getting back into his normal rotation. Originally from Spencer, Wisconsin. Two-time state wrestling champ as well as Hunter Lukey. Lance in third and 11. Under pressure. Trying to get away, and he can't. Gains about a yard. But coming down to make the play with Sal Morrow. And the Bison now in one of those no-man's land positions here at the 35-yard line. Do you want to punt? Do you want to go for it? Certainly out of the range of Krosa. Would be a 52-yard field goal from here. One of the few times today that Lance had the pocket collapse around him when we tried to make the big motion to step up into it try to create a passing lane or find a passing lane it didn't happen that'll take us to the end of the third quarter of play North Dakota State fourth and ten from the 35 when we come back for the fourth quarter here in Newark
start of the fourth quarter here in Newark, Delaware. North Dakota State leading 33 to eight, outscoring the Blue Hens 17 nothing in that second quarter. And Garrett Wegner back at midfield will try to pin the Blue Hens deep here on fourth and 10. End over end, high kick. Bunch of white jerseys in the area, and that one takes a hop back to about the nine yard line before it is downed by Michael Tutsi. That last graphic we showed you, certainly the way that the trend throughout the first uh, three games has gone for NDSU. Coming into today, to the first two, 29 to nothing in the first, 28 to seven in the second, 24 to 10 in the third, and that obviously continued on again as we see what we thought we'd see, to be honest with you, Nolan Henderson getting extended reps at quarterback. The Blue Hens able to drive it 84 yards in 11 plays and get a Jake Roth field goal in the third quarter. Have to drive a long way here, backed up to their own nine yard line. Henderson dumping it off, open man, and room to run for Thyrick Pitts, and he's got a first down to the 20 yard line, gain of 11. Had Beagler coming back to make that tackle from his defensive tackle spot. Playback Insurance Company replay is Marquise Bridges coming on the blitz, and that was the man that was open as Pitts. And you're going to see what you miss, uh, what you don't see often, and that's 25, miss a tackle. Michael Tutsi came up, didn't quite get the play broke down, and whiffed on it. Give and more room to the outside, and now breaking free is Will Knight. Down the sideline, Dawson Weber giving chase, finally making the tackle all the way down at the 20-yard line. 59 yards on that run for the redshirt freshman. Will Knight showing the reason. He's the all-time Delaware High School leading rusher. More tempo here, and Knight again, room up the middle, finally finished off by Jabril Cox after a gain of eight. And the Blue Hens have found some rhythm here in the last couple drives. I like the tempo they're running it with. And of course, these back or, or these running backs, you can't bring them down with arm tackles. Tutsi tried to see if he could arm tackle him, couldn't. Another real good pickup on that first down. Andre Robinson back in the game at tailback here. Henderson fakes, stepping up across the middle and overshooting his man Owen Tyler, who was open in the end zone. Luke Frederick was right there as well. Those two guys almost seeming to run a similar pattern. Nodak Insurance Company replay, because you see it from the end zone. You fake the handoff. Henderson gets his feet set and then just throws it a little bit too high. Tyler was right there and open. Robinson motions out. Blitz comes. Robinson quickly as it slings out in space, and that'll be a first down as Bridges makes the tackle. Ball the did ball come did loose, come but, it, loose, but, but out of bounds. Rolled out. So the first and goal here for the Blue Hens. See where the officials spot it. If they're spotting it there, then that means they were calling blowing the play dead, even though the ball came out, because it came out at about the five or so. Marquise Bridges and Jabril Cox on the tackle. Play action, and that one batted down by Jabril Cox right in the face of Henderson will bring up second and goal. Crossing route, looking at Pitts, the inside of that cross is where he, Henderson was trying to go. Cox around the football once again. All backup defensive linemen in right now on second and goal, and there's Henderson's numbers since he's come into the game. He's done a nice job. Knight gets the carry. Saw so Bartholomew Ogbu. Ogbu come from the backside. Help finish off that tackle. Yeah, the two defensive ends. It was run away from where Ogbu started, but at where Pierce started. Tony kind of held his ground, and Ogbu ran it down from behind. 
Tony Pierce has a couple cousins playing FBS football, including one Artavius with Oregon State as a wide receiver. Third and goal here for the Blue Hens. Henderson trying to roll away from pressure. Back of the end zone, open man, and it is caught by Gene Coleman for the first touchdown of the day for Delaware. Just the third touchdown scored against the Bison defense all year. Nodak Insurance Company replay. He gets it right over the top of Hanky. Hanky tries to reach up there, can't get the ball, drops right into the back of the end zone. And the offense will stay on the field here as the Blue Hens go for two. 12 0 1 to go here in the fourth quarter. Here's the Philly special. We saw this last week. Pitts back of the end zone. Open man. And it's caught by Coleman for two. Ran a very similar play last week, but it was thrown to the quarterback Kehoe for two. And the Blue Hens with some momentum here. A touchdown and a two-point conversion. And the lead is 33-16. 12-0 to go in the fourth quarter. Bobcat scoring a recap, eight plays, 91 yards, an impressive drive for Delaware, and they did it quickly. And a big reason why was a 59-yard run from Will Knight. Seven-yard touchdown reception from Gene Coleman, and then it was Chichi Amachu who actually caught the two-point conversion from Fyrick Pitts, and it's a 17-point game. You may have just seen the, uh, the future of this Delaware offense on that last drive. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Height takes it about four yards deep, and he will just take a knee, and the Bison will start at the 25-yard line. You know, it makes you wonder, too, LT, if we've seen the future of your quarterback coming up sooner than later, possibly. That's what I'm talking about, yep. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank Home Loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Johnson, the motion man, and he will get the give here with Adam Cofield trying to lead the way, and Johnson wraps up after a gain of four. Caleb Ashworth, Noah Plack in that area. Ashworth, the backup defensive lineman. Guy that transferred in from Cincinnati. Was a starter a year ago, and now playing more of a reserve role. In that dominating first half, the Bison had some success in those plays, sweet tight plays. Inside give after the fake. To Christian Watson, and that'll be a first down. As Cofield is able to dart up inside and find some room. As you try to sell the fact against the defense that you're going to come back with the same play, but to the other way, you fake the jet, and then you hand off with a real good slant and a zone blocking scheme up front on your Nodak Insurance Company replay. The Bison get what it needs at this stage of the game, and that is first downs. This offense needs to stay on the field. Trying to follow his man as Sabian Clark does a nice job staying on his feet as he banged into his own blocker and a gain of nine to the 44. Let's go down to Ryan Gellner on the sidelines. Hey guys, it's the first International Bank and Trust sideline report. It's been really neat to see James Hendricks, who's been out with a concussion this week, really coaching up players on the sideline. Uh, Dawson Weber, he got talked to him, took a notebook out of his pocket, started drawing up plays for him. He's been talking on the sideline to Michael Tutsi, and he's very, very involved while being on the bench, guys. And those young guys certainly appreciate hearing it from James Hendricks. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. A little misdirection here. Pitch goes outside and room to run. How about the speed here by the freshman Johnson? Down to the 10-yard line. And that was well designed and executed by the Bison offense. 
Certainly was. You, sh you showed to the wide side, you come back to the near side, and then you count on 75 Dylan Radens to make a block. You see him throw his other guy away, and here's the play that, or the block. Well, we missed it, but Radens did a great job on the edge to allow that sideline to open up for the young freshman runner. Yeah, Justice Henley finally pushed him out of bounds. 46 yards on that carry for Kobe Johnson. Again, beautiful job by 75 Radens. Young man on the outside that can run. Round game again. This time it's Cofield following his blocks, and the Bison answer quickly with a touchdown drive of their own. Really interesting to see that seam right where he found the end zone. On each side of it, there were blue hands laying with their face down. Nodak Insurance Company replay. So they were taken to the turf. There's one, there's two, there's three on the outside and four on the backside. So four blue hens got all the way down to the turf before they could come close to trying to make a tackle. Back to that execution thing. It worked again to get into the end zone. Rosa looking to add the extra point. And this time is able to do so. And after Delaware puts together a 91 yard drive, the Bison answer with a 75 yard drive in just two minutes and 20 seconds. Adam Cofield has another touchdown. The lead back to 24. <laughs> North Dakota State on a 10 yard touchdown run by Adam Cofield has grabbed the lead. I would push the lead back up to 24. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff, kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Townsend from his own two. James Kayser getting in on that tackle as he closes in quickly and also had some help on that play as well. Looked like Wadarsik got in to help make the stop. Kayser has to make sure he does not give up outside leverage. And once he is convinced that the play is going to stay inside, he's able to close on it. So Delaware from the 20 yard line had some momentum going and North Dakota State quickly squashed that this last drive. So Henderson remaining in the game. And Will Knight continues to be a workhorse. And Kayser again closing from his safety position. The device can get that momentum back against the Delaware defense. And so for the Blue Hens offense, they want to see with Henderson at quarterback if they can come back out after a nice long drive and do it again. Henderson, boy, nice play fake to get around the Bison defender. Now he's going to take off and run. There you see the speed of this young man. And coming over was Kayser to finally push him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Looked like Dan Walker got the really nice block on the edge to help bring him to the outside. Your Nodak Insurance Company replay, you pull it down, and this kid is really quick. Nice. There's the block I was talking about. Nice fake there, too, trying to get Cole Karch up in the air and was able to get around him as Karch had a pretty good angle. And zone read again, and Brendan Cook, one of those freshmen that made the trip here, is getting a chance to play some reps. Playing the right defensive end position right now. I mean, it, that was so unexpected that he's not even on the roster or on the turn on any roster that was printed. So when we saw number 95, we're like, we had to watch out and make sure we found out who that was. And it actually, as Brian mentioned, is Cook making the play. Quincy Watson, his first carry of the day on that give inside, was able to gain five yards to the 50. Henderson had it stripped from behind. Ball is loose, but I think one of the offensive linemen from Delaware got on it back at the 45. Speed rush with strength right after the guy we just talked about. That's Cook, number 95, who got in there to knock the ball away. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Here's where Cook's coming from the edge, meeting the quarterback. Beautiful job to beat that tackle and then get the hand in there to take the ball and knock it free. Beat David Kroll, the offensive tackle there on that left side. Third and 10. Bison bringing pressure again. Here they come. Henderson sneaks out of it and is able to dump it off to an open man, and that is Knight. 
He's got a first down gain of 17 yards inside the 40. Solid adjustment by the running back. Once he sees his quarterback flow to the outside, he adjusts his right to flow with him. No Deck Insurance Company replay. 25, that is Will Knight. So right now he's in block mode, and now he sees his quarterback scrambling, flies, finds himself open in the flat, makes a move to get the first. Boy Henderson, one of those guys that can just keep plays alive, and how important that is. With North Dakota State sending so much pressure today. Yeah, he won three high school state championships as the quarterback, so knows how to win football games. Henderson running free again. McCormick knocked him out. Lost the football there, but I think he's just going to run out of bounds. It's going to be a loss of about five yards. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Tutsi back into the game for North Dakota State. James Kayser played some reps there this drive. Second and 15 for the Blue Hens. Henderson. Trying to hang in the pocket. Now got some happy feet. Now he's going to launch downfield. And has a man open in the end zone. Did he get it? Yes! Touchdown! Chichi Amachi. Boy, the ability with his feet to help his arm. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Look at him sidestep the pressure. Get those feet back in position to heave it down. <laughs> and then. Yep. Boy, that is a beautiful He's catch in. by Amachi. Getting that knee down as he made the reception. And he corralled it and hung on to it. And, and that is a 44-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, you saw the official, too, make sure the catch was made all the way through. Now they're going for two. Coleman in motion. And they flip it to him. Coleman wrapped up by Jabril Cox and a lot of help. And a failed two-point conversion there for the Blue Hens will keep the score 40 to 22 with six minutes left here in the football game. We step aside. Blue Hens keep coming with the Bison still an 18-point lead here. Delaware responds quickly. Seven plays, 80 yards on the Bobcats scoring recap in just three minutes and 35 seconds. Chichi Amachi, the 44-yard touchdown reception from Henderson, and Henderson's done a nice job. Now nine of 12 for 125 yards and two scores. And the lead remains 18 now for the Bison as they get the football and anticipating an onside kick, but it's booted away and will bounce through the end zone. Trevor Height back deep just to make sure that thing didn't get out of hand. What a difference a half has made offensively for the Blue Hens. That's 29 yards on 26 plays in that first half, and the 44 yard uh, touchdown pass adds up to 234. So, again, on a couple of uh, drives when we saw Henderson come in there and the tempo and everything about the offense looks so much better, I think we've seen the future of this uh, Delaware Blue Hens offense, and that's with. Henderson at quarterback. Zeb Noland in the game at quarterback here with six minutes to go in the football game. Delayed and they're going to run it. Good strong run here on first down. I believe that was Cofield on the carry and pick up of eight yards to the 33. Looks like a pretty good combo block at the point of attack by 68 Zach Johnson who pulled along with his tight end Gindor. There's Johnson. I think Tyler Roll here wants to put together a six minute offense and try to keep the ball the rest of the game. Keep the ball on the ground here. Sabian Clark now in a tailback. Johnson, the motion man. And Clark finds a small crease. He's got enough for a first down to the 42, pick up a four. 
Now it's 232 rushing yards for North Dakota State here today. And here's a look at Zeb Nolan. 16 junior, transferred from Iowa State. Came in here, battled for the starting quarterback job all throughout the spring and all throughout the fall and has been very supportive of Trey Lance when he was known to start. Yeah, the very first thing I think he told Lance when Coach Ince announced Lance as being the starter, he says, I got your back. Eyes of keeping the ball on the ground. A nice footwork through the hole by Clark. Staying in bounds. And Sabian Clark, a nice run. And a gain of close to 19 yards inside Delaware territory to the 44. That's what Tyler Roll wants to see out of Sabian Clark. He says, sometimes we have to remind the young man that you're about 210 pounds. I thought Noah Gindorf got a real good block to the line of scrimmage, and that's the type of finish that the Bison want to see out of number 30. Yeah, just shrugging off Amante Struthers there <laughs> and pushing him into the sideline. A good strong run here, and North Dakota State obviously would love to run this thing right down the Blue Hen's throat here at the end of the game. Approaching the four-minute mark. Mathis, the motion man. Johnson, more room up the middle, and oh, he was an ankle tackle away from possibly breaking his second touchdown run of the day. Whitehead was the guy that was able to get in and just trip him up. Real good smash on the combo block. It's Kubis 61 and 75 Radens. They take care of that, opens up the seam, and that's where your yards were fine. Really nice combo with Kubis and, and Radens on the left side of the Bison offensive line. Kobe Johnson now over 100 yards rushing today. 10 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Not too bad for the true freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Well, we were told he was going to play a bigger role today. He certainly has, and there he goes again. This time, Delaware selling out on run, and Cam, oh, excuse me, that was not Cam Kitchen. That was one of the backup defensive Morris. linemen coming in. Yeah, Jordan Morris, 6'2", lecture freshman out of Burlington, New Jersey. Talked about that six minute drive on the offense. We're halfway through it. Clark finding more room. Pretty good surge again. Gain of five to the 26. Let's take now a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. And here's some watch picks that you folks at home submitted. Thanks so much for that. Hope you're all enjoying watching Bison football wherever you are, including that cat. <laughs> he wants to get on the field. I'm pointing at the White Hat where the <laughs> official is. Yep, keep him coming this year. Third and five for the Bison. Nolan and Clark in the backfield. Could be Zeb's first pass of the day. Zeb fires Babich. Pretty well covered on that play, and Struthers in that spot was able to man up. And that'll bring on Krosa for a field goal attempt here with 159 left. Looked like Nolan was trying to back shoulder that. And it this copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. This will be a 44-yard attempt for Krosa. Hit from 46 earlier today. Same part of the field. Into a pretty good win. Oh, it's a fake. Oh, how about this? And trying to get to first down yardage was Wegner, and he was thrown out of bounds. He got there. And he did get the first down to the 20-yard line. He punts, kickoffs, and runs for first downs now. And North Dakota State can now pretty much run the clock out. We'll see if Donnie Rocco wants to take his timeouts or not here. And Wegner showing a little speed. These guys don't get to cover it, don't get to run it too often. Here it is again on your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Nash block. Jensen setting the block a little bit. Yeah, and also uh, there was another good block on the edge too by Babich. Clark up the middle, staying on his feet. Clark bouncing outside, touchdown! Sure looked like Sabian Clark had a lot more will to get to the end zone 
than the guys in the blue jerseys had to try to knock him <laughs> down. <laughs> That's a tired football team on the other side. They just want to get out of here. Now, how many times over the last decade have we seen North Dakota State just run teams into the ground at this point in the game? And now Croso will kick the extra point, and it's 47-22. 20-yard touchdown run from Sabian Clark, a nine-play, 75-yard drive, in four minutes and 14 seconds on the Nodak Insurance Company replay. Here's Clark springing through there, breaking arm tackles. That's the encouraging sign. That's the third one right there, and then he bounces out and will get into the end zone. So I'm going to say there are four arm tackles that he ran through on that touchdown. Boy, North Dakota State has really spread the wealth in the rushing department. Now 490 total yards, 295 on the ground. And your two top rushers today are Kobe Johnson and Sabian Clark, who are guys that right now that are probably three and four in your depth chart. Yeah, a redshirt freshman and a true freshman. <laughs> So the Bison will get out of here with win number three and the 24th straight victory of this of this program dating all the way back to 2017. Townsend back deep once again. Had a nice return in the first half, set up a Jake Roth field goal. And this one booted Malmore towards Coleman, who takes it on a hop at his own three. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Destin Talbert giving chase. Dawson Weber. And Weber throws him out of bounds at about the 11. And the Weber's not going to get up. He, well, now he does come up. He twisted, came up a little slow. Remember after that really solid hit he had in the first half, I thought he might have hurt himself a little bit there. Got up a little bit slow. Here he is again, but coming off. Dawson Weber is going to be sore after this game. And certainly the Bison hoping to get James Hendricks back sooner than later. Henderson remains in the game here. 135 left. Wilcox running up to the line of scrimmage and Tutsi coming in to guard the slot. Oh boy, and Cox read that thing all the way. Oh, and 42 explode on the ball, and Quincy Watson was on the receiving end of it. <laughs> yeah, even though he ended up in the end zone, his forward progress was stopped out by there by the six or so, so it's not a safety. Boy, did uh, Coxon had that one read because, and and the, the pre-snap movement, as you mentioned, he came off the slot, went right down on the hip of his defensive end and exploded in and blew the play up. Handoff again to Watson and a bunch of Bison getting in on that tackle. Aaron Mercadell, maybe the first one there, will bring up third and long. Gonna need one more snap. If you're Danny Rocco, you can still take something out of this, especially how your offense at least played in the second half. Yeah, with well over 200 yards of offense in the second half after being manhandled, totally dominated in that first, but yeah, and again, we don't know what Coach Rocco's going to do. I mean, the CA is a good conference down, down, you know, he has all that yet to play. They got to play Pitt yet. But it, Nolan Henderson certainly is the better of the two quarterbacks today, not even close. But a big win for the Delaware program because it was a conference game against Rhode Island on the road. So at least until they get back into conference play in October, as the final play of the game in North Dakota State is 3 0, a road win, 47 22 the final, the two head coaches. We'll congratulate each other at midfield. And the Bison will catch a flight back to North Dakota tonight and get ready for UC Davis next Saturday. Our winning 50 50 number is B 331 906 and B 331 906. Please visit the bottom part of their center ticket office. Well, I really like what the Bison did offensively in that first half, showing so many looks to this Delaware team and building that big lead at halftime and dominating on defense to to make even the positive things that Delaware did in the second half in the context of this game almost made them irrele irrelevant because of how well NDSU played in that first half. We saw Trey Lance there, another 
efficient performance for the redshirt freshman out of Marshall, Minnesota. 18 of 23, 195 yards, three scores. He did run for 23 yards as well. And the Bison fans that made the trip here to Newark, Delaware, treated to a fine performance from their team. Catch a word with the head coach. He is part of the group at midfield. Well, this con program continues to roll along. Should be an interesting text against the Big Sky favorites. Next Saturday, back at the Fargo Dome before Maver Missouri Valley play starts in early October at Illinois State. Yeah, we have a lot of time to talk about Davis, but that's a really good team coming into the Fargo Dome next, next week. And kind of a scare against San Diego, a non-scholarship program last week, one at the buzzer. Ryan Gellner is standing by with head coach Matt Entz. Coach, another really convincing win for your team today. You do it on the road. You have to be pretty proud of your guys. Excited about our guys right now uh, to come here and play uh, a lot of unknowns. We had a lot of uh, young guys that had to step up and play. Uh, there's still going to be plenty that we need to continue to improve on. Uh, faltered a little bit defensively in the fourth quarter. Uh, special teams, there were some erratic moments. But, you know, I always go back. Frank Beamer said 87% of the time you get a punt block, you lose. Well, today we were one of the 13% that was found a way to win. You talked about the young guys. Kobe Johnson goes over 100 yards. Uh, your next re leading rusher was Sabian Clark. A couple of young guys that got a shot today and really, really turned the motor on. Next man up. You know, and that's something that I think Bison Nation, Bison football's prided themselves on over the course of the years is, you know, it doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter, you know, where you're coming from, how long you've been part of the program. When your number's called, you got to be ready to execute. Trey Lance completed a pass last week to nine different receivers, ten different receivers this week, Coach. It's unbelievable. We'll have to get Ryan Peralta on that and see when the last time that happened. But you know what? That's just great trust in his players. He's getting protection from the offensive line, and, and, and he under, he's starting to understand the game at a faster pace, and he can handle the trade shift in motions a little bit more, but pleased with where he's at. And we just get, we're, There's things we got to clean up still. One quick question on defense. You guys were three of 13 on third downs. You were able to get off the field a lot of times on third downs. Early we were. Unfortunately, in the second half, I don't know if we got them to third down very often. So there, there's always yeah, – I'm super excited about the win. You know, uh, half the country got beat today and only half won. So I'm pretty excited about winning. Way to put it in perspective. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys. Well, Matt Entz 3-0 in his young head coaching career. And the Bison off to a good start here in 2019. We're back to Delaware Stadium here in Newark after this timeout on the KBOI Camp Wayar Bison Television Network. Forty-seven twenty-two, your final from here in Newark, Delaware today. Fans finaling out. North Dakota State three and zero on the season. Twenty-four straight wins overall for the program, dating back to two thousand seventeen. Brian, Sean, Lee Timmerman, Ryan Gellner, with you. Thanks so much for joining us here, all across the state of North Dakota and beyond. And LT, when you look North Dakota State offensively, a lot of things to like. The offensive line really asserting their will in the last half of this football game. Yeah, certainly physically uh, owned it uh, as. NDSU has been known to do in uh, these national championship runs, especially in that second half, kind of take over and, and answered. I think whenever Delaware had some really nice things and some really solid long drives, the Bison came back with an answer. So it's like, well, you know, congratulations to you. You scored your touchdown. We're getting our six points right back and uh, did it in multiple ways with some long passes and some solid runs. And of course, we talked about Johnson with uh, with his success on the ground. But yeah, the Bison offense was once again solid. And I love the variety of the play calling, especially in the first half oh, when, when uh, Coach Roll had total creativity. Yeah, a lot of highlights to get to. It didn't start off great with this blocked punt. Early in the game after a three and out in Delaware took a lot of the momentum early and then the Bison did respond and really got after the quarterback today and it started with this interception from Michael Tutsi. Yeah, Tutsi was all over the place. This time he gets a pick. He adds to that, but he had, had double figure tackles again today, I think. And then here's uh, Ty Brooks opening up the outside. We thought the Bison would be able to get some things outside. Johnson's first touchdown as a true freshman for NDSU behind the big guys on the right side of that offensive line. 
North Dakota State, seven sacks today. Really got after the quarterback and were not shy about bringing pressure. Oh, they ate him up. Here's Meiji getting in there. We saw Tuska getting in there before. And Brennan Cook got some nice pressure off the edge today as well. Oh, he did. That was nice to see. And special teams plays. Coach Jens has been aggressive in the special teams department this year. We saw more of that today. Nothing too crazy there. This was kind of neat to see. Off the crossbar and in. <laughs> Don't see that very often. 46 yards for Griffin Crosa. And boy, was he fired up about it. Nice return on the ensuing kickoff. And a guy that Townsend does a nice job in the return game for Delaware. Keogh still into the game, looking off into the flat. Nice break up there from Jackson Hankey. Led to a field goal. That's the key. I mean, you drive into that red zone and you don't allow the touchdown. Jimmy more, Kapuris. More of that variety on the offensive line because multiple players carried the ball like that today. Beautiful play call here on third and nine, setting up the screen to Cofield, who had a nice day today all the way around. Adam Cofield gets the touchdown on the catch, and it adds to Trey Lance's points responsible for. Oh, that given that given the take there from number 24 to get the outside, he's going to be fun to watch as he develops. Christian Watson hauling in a tough reception that time from Lance. And off the play action, a lot of things set up as Malmstrom also makes a reception to pullback. Just continue to move the change. You pick up those first downs. A little bounce here from Brooks. Almost got in. <laughs> yeah, try to pass the ball, Kehoe. No chance. How would you like to have that? 55 and 52 twisting right in your face. This is a nice ball there to Phoenix Sproles who got some separation again and he's shown the knack for the big play. He's got tremendous hands. But Kobe Johnson, this guy just continues to impress. He just gets better and better and better. And for North Dakota State, the leading rusher today, 100 yards, 101 on the ground, along with his first co collegiate touchdown. Here are your final stats. Bison Sponsored by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. Yeah, almost 500 total yards again and you're a dozen more first downs. I mean, it's just, it's almost impossible to stay uh, in a game with, let alone have a chance to win it when the other team picks up that many more first downs and the sacks. Of course, uh, most of those, again, when Keo was in there, he got to Henderson a couple of times, but the offensive line, as Coach Entz said, uh, for the most part, all but I think just one play off the top of my head kept their quarterback clean, and that's another reason Trey Lance can do what he does because he has not been pressured much this year. And a lot of different receivers. Ryan talked about it with Coach Entz in the postgame interview, but 10 different receivers catching a pass. When you're game planning for that offense, good luck when you have that many guys you have to worry about. We step aside and we'll be back with more, including our Nodak Insurance Company player of the game as our coverage is coming to close here soon from Newark, Delaware, home of the Blue Hens. Back for more of our post-game coverage, North Dakota State and Delaware Bison. Win it by 25, 47-22, the final score. NDSU getting a lot of things done defensively and offensively in this game, LT, and I, I still just can't get over the amount of bodies we continue to see on the field on the offensive side. It's, it's hard to almost keep track of up here. I can't imagine the opposing defensive coordinators. Yeah, well, we, we saw the sacks, and I wasn't going to go back to the defense and want to shout out and point out uh, the safeties today. Without James Hendricks, Dawson Weber got his first start. He had seven tackles. He was he was in on things, and uh, Michael Tutsi had double-figure tackles again today. So I thought the safeties played a solid game, but, of course, whenever... <laughs> Uh, it, it helps with the guys up front are doing their job. Let's take a look at some more highlights from today's contest in the second half. And the bias continue to bring pressure on Kehoe. You see Jabril Cox and Spencer Wagey coming in. Trey Lance keeping this play alive and a really nice catch by Noah Kindorf in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, but Lance showing his patience and development as a quarterback. This guy was impressive today. Redshirt freshman Will Knight. He had That's a, a nice of, shake, yeah. A couple of big ones. Eight carries for 115 yards in this game for Will Knight, including a big 59-yarder. And they kept Henderson in the game, and I think it was the right move. It kept North Dakota State off balance. And here's the 59-yarder I was talking about, Dawson Weber, tracking him down and making the tackle. And 
Coleman Henderson floating it over the defense over the hand of Jackson Hankey and Coleman making the touchdown reception. But the problem was on the other side of the ball, NDSU just continued to grind on the ground in between the tackles. Yeah, that's, that's the proper uh, term to grind. And we saw this guy really come up the big today, I think, too. Sabian Clark kept his hand down, got pretty good pressure, or excuse, uh, momentum there. <laughs> Speaking of momentum, I mean, we're just barely scratching the surface of how good number 24 is going to be. He's only 177 pounds, but just runs so hard. And then Cofield, also a nice job in all phases. 10 carries, 40 yards, and there's his touchdown. And Henderson, again, keeping something alive and making something out of nothing, keeping his eyes downfield, and a great catch by Chichi Amachi. Little fake field goal action here. We've seen Maddox get creative in the special teams department as Garrett Wagner runs for a fourth, uh, fourth down conversion for a first down and fourth and six. A little bit of power. Kubis helping open things up, and Sabian Clark finishes it off. Clark finishing with 60 yards on six carries and that 20-yard touchdown. Other scores from around the Missouri Valley, Indiana State getting the first win of the season for the Sycamores, 19-7 over Eastern Kentucky. South Dakota State in control against Drake. And should be. In the third quarter. South Dakota leading by 10 over Houston Baptist. That game in the second quarter. And Youngstown State looking to go to 3-0 with a victory at home against Duquesne. Illinois State a quick start at Eastern Illinois. And Montana State Western Illinois just getting started. Couple games coming up later tonight. UT Martin at Southern Illinois and Missouri State will take on Tulane. Southern Illinois off to a good start here to start this season. Got a big FBS win last week against UMass. And we will step aside one more time and have our Nodak Insurance Company player of the game and wrap things up from here at Delaware Stadium out on the East Coast. Back to wrap things up from here in Newark, Delaware. North Dakota State nearly 500 yards of total offense, 295 on the ground. Pretty clean game, only seven penalties total between the two products. One of those guys had a great ground game from North Dakota State. Ten carries, 40 yards, and a touchdown is Adam Cofield. He is standing by with Ryan Gellner. Yeah, guys, a couple of touchdowns for Adam Cofield, one through the air, one on the ground. You really spread the love in the running back room today. A lot of different carries for a lot of different guys. You know, uh, Coach Larson always talks about, you know, you know, everybody is going to be, you know, have the opportunity to uh, make a make a statement in the game. And, uh, you know, it, when you get that opportunity, you make the most of it. You really uh, pushed yourselves around in that fourth quarter. I think your offensive line played well throughout the game, but it really showed in the fourth quarter. Talk about that offensive line. You know, uh, Coach Bozic, you know, he has those guys, you know, working day in, day out uh, throughout the week. And, uh, you know, it, it shows on you know on Saturdays when you know the get those guys want it more than the other the other opponent team. On the receiving end, man, it has been impressive this week alone. Ten different receivers catch the ball, and uh, you were one of those guys. But ten different guys catching the ball—that's unheard of. You know, uh, you know Trey, he, uh, he he's he, he's coming he's coming along, and you know he's uh, he's still learning. He's he's you know he's competing at a high level and uh, I think uh, you know, it's just you know up and up from here all right man I appreciate it uh, best of luck the rest of the way we appreciate the time appreciate it we will grab uh, Jackson Hankey as well and actually I'll make my way over to Jackson Hankey Jackson didn't know TV was going to be in the deal today but uh, Jackson congratulations uh, the defensive effort I think split into two different halves you guys were gassed a little bit at, uh, at the end but when you were firing on all cylinders it sure was good yeah you know we, we definitely uh, had a great first half. I think we had a good third quarter. Um, the fourth quarter is where, you know, we have we have to be better. You know, we, we, we got to play a little bit better. We got we got a little bit tired. We kind of lost track of some of our fundamentals, and we let some big plays happen. And you know, some of that's a credit to Delaware. Uh, you know, they had, they're a good football team, and and that quarterback was was a dynamic player, and he made some plays. And you know, you know, we just we got to be better. Six tackles and a sack for yourself, and one huge pass breakup. Uh, which came at a big time for NDSU. Yeah, well, um, you know, like you said, it was kind of the tale of two halves. I thought I had a good three quarters, but, you know, like the fourth quarter when the, when the defense doesn't do well and, you know, it's kind of it's hard to say I did well or things like that. So, you know, as, as a group, you know, we just need to finish stronger. 
As a group, though, you had seven sacks today, and I think that answers a lot of questions about the pressure that you guys can bring when you need to bring it. Our D line was, uh, I mean, they were the unit of the game. Those guys absolutely, I mean, they got after the, that quarterback. They got after that offensive line. Those guys, not enough can be said about the game that they had today. I mean, those guys did a great job, and, um, you know, we, we got to keep playing hard in the back seven and, and let them get after that quarterback. 3-0, and you get to head home uh, for a game next week. That's got to feel good to be back in the Dome. It does. Um, you know, we, we enjoy going on the road. You know, it's kind of us against everybody, but there's nothing like playing in the Fargo Dome. Jackson, appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Jackson Hankey, guys, and uh, a very happy Bison team, but uh, you can tell they're worn out and they're ready to get back home. Guys. Right. Appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks so much to Jackson Hankey and also to Adam Cofield and our NODAC Insurance Company player of the game is none other than Trey Lance. His second time he's won this honor so far this season. Uh, continues to be so efficient with the football. 18 of 23, 195 yards and three touchdowns through the air. Had an add a extra 23 yards of, uh, of rushing as well. Here's one that goes out to his running back, but Trey Lance. The Bison did so well, I think, in that first half of showing one thing, going to the other. Here he stays patient, gets it downfield. Sproles makes another over-the-shoulder catch, but on the year now, through three full games for this freshman quarterback, he's still at 79 and a half percent. 39 out of 49 for Lance with nine touchdowns and goose eggs in the INT department. That's not bad for your first three Creekers games. No. And that is why he is the Nodak Insurance Company player of the game. Coming up next, we head back home, load up the truck, go back to the west, and unload things in Fargo at the Fargo Dome. 2.30 kickoff, 1.30 pregame. UC Davis, the Big Sky favorites coming to town. That should be an interesting matchup here and, in the non-conference. And uh, Davis will bring a different look on the offense, that's for sure. Very different. Like to spread it out and move quickly on the tempo side. Upcoming schedule for North Dakota State after one more non-conference tune-up. A week off, and then it's time for Missouri Valley play. Illinois State on the road, noon kickoff October 5th. Then Northern Iowa, Missouri State, South Dakota State, Youngstown State. It'll be an interesting challenge throughout October and early November. Yeah, remember, too, the uh, UNI game, too. That's the homecoming game, so that's a little bit earlier start, too, if you're planning on heading to the Dome for that one. Thanks so much for tuning in all across the state of North Dakota and beyond. We're pleased you could join us on the KVLY, KFYR, Bison Television Network. For Ryan Gellner, Beth Houle, Alex Egan, Lee Timmerman, and our entire NBC Sports crew, I'm Brian Sean. Saying so long from Newark. We'll see you next Saturday afternoon for UC Davis. Have a great Saturday night, everybody.